All right, lads, before we start this week's episode, I'm here to tell you about our latest sponsor, Coin Corner. Dot com. Now, they are one of the longest-running exchanges for cryptocurrency in Europe, and they're one of the best ways to buy and sell Bitcoin here in the UK. If you don't know what Bitcoin is, it's the number one cryptocurrency on the planet. It's been around for over a decade, and it's going mainstream. It's in the news every day. Celebrities like Tom Brady are tweeting about it. El Salvador's made it legal tender. If you want to get involved in the cryptocurrency game, the best way, in our opinion... To do that is to go to coincorner.com slash word pod. You go there, they know we've sent you. You're getting in the cryptocurrency game. They know we've sent you. Everyone's winning. You're helping our sponsors. They're helping us. That's how the pod game works, okay? That's what we want you to do. Now, we've got to say this. When you invest in cryptocurrency, it's like stocks and shares. Your capital is at risk. Don't invest anything. You can't afford to lose. Be safe. Don't be a fucking dickhead. Now, let's get back to the pod. What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a ship boozer, you get an extra episode every single week, exclusive. No one else gets to see it apart from the Patreons. And you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well. That's what you get. And on top of all of that, you get access to the entire back catalogue of the Patreon episodes. We've been doing that for like a year now. There's Loads of content there. There's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk. They only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shit loads of content for us and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. Massive week for this podcast. Low, it's huge. Can't start without talking about it. 6,000 patrons. 6,000 patrons. Absolutely. So thanks to every one of those fucking good eggs. Uh-huh. This is how mental this podcast is. I hit, We hit 6,000 patrons. I think we might be the biggest UK comedy uh, patron. There was one that was up there, but they've hidden their figures, so it's hard to know. But that Socially lo- distant sports bar. We're who we love. We're yeah. mates with them. Mike's coming on very soon. Um, so. But they, I think they've hidden their figure on Patreon, which yeah, feels man. like admitting defeat. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's less. This is how mental this podcast is. I hit 6,000. I was like, yeah, it's what we do, mate. Yeah. <laughs> was it? When we hit five, I got fucking hammered with my neighbor on gin and tonic. I was like, I just think it's important. It's a milestone. Now I'm like, yeah, it's not 10 yet. Not well, 10 yet yeah. Paul Blair and Paul Smith text me and said, hey, you got to be happy with that lad. And I was like, I'll be happy when Tim Dillon is jealous of us. <laughs> yeah, we go are. On, go on Google Tim Dillon's Patreon. Get us there, please. Oh, my days. He's got like 30,000 and he earns about $140,000 a month. Yeah. And he has a, it's just him, just monologuing him. with his producer, Ben. I would love to know what the percentages are because Ben's a big part of that. I think it might be 80-20 and I bet it's no more than eight, like 20 for the producer. So I that, think he's on $8 an hour. Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> that would seem uh, slightly mean, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, Carl, the, if you keep working hard, we'll up yours to that one day. I'd love $8 an hour. <laughs> Really? Can you imagine if we no, only paid no, you in actually, dollars? No. Sorry, if we paid you in dollars no, no, no. and made you go and change it. <laughs> Just pay us in fucking sterling, lad. I'm happy with what I've got. Thank you. Obviously, other massive things going on this week. I got new uh, glasses. So that's you massive. Did. And I didn't right. know if you'd notice. Are they Ray Bans? Yeah, they are. They're beautiful. Ray Dans? Nice. Gay, gay Dans? Nice. You know which other podcast you need to be on. And um, I got a new Winter Milan top. Yeah. Beautiful. Ronaldo on the back. But. Pretty, do you know how big it is getting new lenses? It's uh, new glasses. It's kind of big. Yeah. And I had this little moment when I literally left the house today. I went, Laura, do you think, do you think Adam and Carl will notice? <laughs> She's like, are you okay, babe? I was like, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm hoping they notice. So is this your version of getting your hair done? Do you know my gla- hundred <laughs> percent. You're so fucking right. Do you know how <laughs> annoyingly right that is? I've had the same uh, specs for 10 years and I bought a second pair and I've one broke. So I sent it back to the uh, opticians in 
London and they remade it and they've stopped doing that range. So I got in contact and they were like, ah, oh, it's out of, we don't make that anymore. We can do like a version of it. We can redo it for you, but it's 600 quid. And I don't give a fuck if we've got 6,000 patrons. I have got small kids. I can't have 600 pound glasses on my face. Cause if they, if I just take them off stupidly and then you've got babies and they love going, ah, no, I've done. There's so, so many I've got, problems in your life that would be solved with the cage for the kids. Yeah, definitely. I mean- You could have 10 grand glasses then. You keep going back to the cage, have kids, stick them in a fucking cage <laughs> and um, don't tell anyone because it's frowned upon. Rubber glasses. Uh, so yeah, new, but obviously pretty big gigs this week. Um, what have you I was, done this week On then? Wednesday, I was in Royton. Fuck off. For Colin Manford. On Wednesday? Good. Wednesday night, I was driving to Royton, not Oldham Town Centre, yeah. a, a, a town just next to Oldham, basically That's a suburb a big, of Oldham. Big, big, big one. Thanks, that. Carl. Do you know, uh, I wanted to take a lot of my people with me because obviously it's a big moment. Yeah, yeah. Gigging for, I did my first ever gig for the Comedy Store on Tuesday. I support, How was that actually? Good. I, su I supported <laughs> John Bishop on Thursday, but that pales in, because Wednesday was just so big for me. Royton. Royton. There's a I've big... got some news. Not I've got some news. No, 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 no. Wait. Hang on, guys. No, I'm just... going to run. No, a... I've worked so hard for this, Adam. I'm going to run a half triathlon. No, <laughs> no I, I've worked so hard What's for that, Royton. No, yeah. no, you're not shitting on my Royton. <laughs> I, I gig for the not good Manford brother. Come on. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm gonna run what were you doing? No, fuck your marathon. I want to know. No, a half triathlon. Oh, oh you're not. Okay, right. You can't even swim, can you? What? No, but that's the third one. Is that a one and that's a half? half? That's two thirds. Is what? it a, that's oh. two thirds? Just soft squat. No, you just, you, you, you do the whole first event. Jump you do half the second one. <laughs> and then you see who's winning. If you're getting annoyed about what we're not talking about, I am as well. <laughs> what's, a tri what's half a triathlon? It's like a triathlon, but you only do half of it. A one and a half athlon. Yeah. Right. But the, they're called half triathlon. It's like a half marathon, but for triathlons. Right. And I think I'm going to do one. No, you're yeah. not. Why? Uh, and you're not. Why? Because you won't. But I will. No, no. You have all the best intentions too, but you won't do it. I will. Okay. There's we have a half even... triathlon coming up in Birkenhead. When? November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When, when are you going to start training? Last six months ago or... No, I'm just going to start now. Who's going to put six in weeks. the application form? Literally sit in six weeks. What? Who's going to put in the application form? <laughs> I think you're the biggest to barrier <laughs> to you doing a hard triathlon is you remembering to apply for it. Like, I actually think that if Adam was there, he'd just give it a shot. Like, I think, get his Lycra on and give it a shot. But I honestly think six weeks out, you'd be like, Adam, the race for you is to get that application form in time. <laughs> Lads, I was going to do it, but I uh, have my internet was down. What's the first? Two seconds. Is, is it the run first? You run. Right. Then ride. And then Motorbike. Guys. Speedboat. You're driving me mad. What? Run. I, I was enjoying the joke. That I egged out, and now you've, I feel, taken it too far with the triathlon. If I don't hear about what happened with you in London on Wednesday, I'm going to pop a testicle. I'm so excited about ducky it. Ducky houses. Oh, we, did, we have Wagamamas, and it's really lovely so ducky houses. Yeah. Like, normally, you only get four, but for some reason, there was five in the box. Yeah. And I got an extra hoisin dip with it. I got Mackey's delivered it. I feel anxious. You give me, you give me. Waited over an hour oh. for a pizza as well. Did it come? Yeah. Order, 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 order. Fuck your half triathlon. Yeah, we ordered it. And then oh. an hour later. <laughs> I don't know what happened on Wednesday. Still waiting for a pizza. <gasps> but you do, though. I do. The joke. And you were saying it. You're saying you don't know what I was there. I watched it, yeah. yeah. Uh, watched them get his uh, pizza. People are really starting to work you out, mate. Because I did a uh, Instagram post yesterday <laughs> of my garden and I just mowed it. And I was like, oh, I love doing stripes. Laughing face. And I love it when people are like, <laughs> Don't you mean lines, Dan? <laughs> and then one person went, Don't you mean lines, Dan? In a sarcastic voice. Oh no, that's the joke, just like Sensei Carl would say. Yeah, yeah. People are really getting your anti jokes. Get in. But people do call cocaine stripes or so, don't they? Yeah. Or like just I'll have a stripe. Yeah. 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 Should have thought of that when I wrote, I like doing stripes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the people who did, yeah, I knew you knew it, but the other people don't know that you knew it. They yeah. Thought, they thought, yeah, they didn't they know. They didn't know that a professional comedian was being a bell end. I liked it. Uh, I wonder if they then read the other comments and go, oh God, 17 <laughs> other people thought of that joke. And the office looked beautiful as well. Yes. What was that one that happened on That's Instagram good. a couple of weeks ago? I made a joke and then the fella made the exact same joke below it. 
Oh, it I was it in the group, didn't I? Yeah, it was. I'm. Um, yeah, I can't remember now. No, it was on Twitter. Yeah, screenshot of it. If we don't talk about Wednesday night in London for you guys, my testicles going to pop and you're going to have to deal with it. Belushi's. Oh, oh my god, mate. We had Cafe Patron. Oh. It, was fucking it wasn't even Cafe Patron. It tasted like it. Oh. It was just yeah. coffee flavored tequila, different brand, but it was still nice. It was good. expensive as well. Fuck Belushi's. Fuck your half triathlon. Fuck Colin. Oh, Manford. we had the you had it, um... <laughs> Fuck Royton, fuck my glasses, and fuck 6,000 pages. I do not mean that. I love you all, and we want more. Oh, we had a gig. Um, what was the gig? Oh, <laughs> Carl. Spe speaking of gigs, by the way. Carl. Um, what? Carl. You know what a gig it was, isn't it? When speaking of that? gigs, on Tuesday, coming yeah. this week, Eshan Akbar, pod legend and hero. He's, uh, he's doing the Underbelly Festival. So we're doing the Underbelly Festival on Sunday, the 19th of September. It's all but sold out. I think there's like two or three tickets left. If you want them and you're an early access patron, you can get it. If you're a public fucking pube, then you, you, you're you too late already. <laughs> so it's already happened. It was yesterday for you or even later you if you don't public watch. public pube. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's brilliant. Can we, let's not call them muggles anymore. Let's call them pubes. Yeah, the public, public pubes. pubes. Oh, and they both start with P-U-B. It works. So he's doing Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, the 21st of September. He's doing his show. Oh my God, we're nine minutes in. The Underbelly Festival. Oh, we, okay. And I, I just, I, I promised him I'd give her a little push. Nice. Let's um, go for a break anyway. <gasps> yeah. That's in London. He's doing stand-up in London on Tuesday. <laughs> and we Not love him. I couldn't <laughs> give a fuck about our Bengali pub bay. Yeah. Tell us about Live at the Apollo, you massive gig dick tease. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, that yeah, was good. It was good. It's good gig. Right, now a message from <laughs> Manscaped. It was fucking great. Dream come true stuff. It was, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's been hard to sort of... Do you know what's funny? I, c I can say this now. So I, as you know, I got told about what? It's about 10 weeks ago now? About that, yeah. Something yeah. like that. And he only told one person. That, that's the sort that's of... It. <laughs> one of the best secrets in comedy. I told... I got told... You can tell a few sort of p important people. I got told, don't tell anyone! But, you know, invite whoever you want. So I was like, right, so I can invite everyone if I want. And But I kept it. I, don't, I didn't want to get in trouble, so I obviously told yous. Told the people I was going to bring down, like my dad and Sam and uh, me, me cousin come down, me mate Josh come down with his missus. Um, I told a few people. But I was trying to keep it small. There's a few comics who were like, I've heard the fucking rumour. Because things spread without you saying it. Like, I have messages off comics that I... Given no hint to going, I've heard you're doing the fuck. Cause yeah, because comics are big, gossipy bitches. And that's not even the ones with podcasts. That's like, there's people who just, it's natural that you talk about it. You're like, have yeah. you heard about Ro? Yeah. What about Ro? Oh, no, you've not heard. Yeah. Wow. Well, like, yeah. the only person who really kept it secret See, but the was, thing went, was wait, Scott Bennett. That definitely he kept, because in his head, if he tells someone and it gets back to the, the BBC, they'll go, right, he's gone. <laughs> like, he's got enough paranoia that he's like, oh, God, I don't want to lose it. <laughs> The thing is, though, at the minute in the comedy industry, if you go to someone, have you heard about Row? And they go, no. And you go, oh, you haven't heard, don't worry about it. People think I've been doing some rapes, and I haven't. Do you know what I mean? That's more of a common thing, have you heard about that male comic, than he's doing live at the Apollo. Not even There's one more rape. male comics Rapes. sexually assaulting other comics than there are male comics doing live at the Apollo. You're not one of the rapesies. No, no, no you're a bit, a bit of a slapsies <laughs> now and again. <laughs> That's how you get hard. What? Um, um, yeah, so <laughs> it was, I, I was trying to not tell people for so long, but as it got closer and closer to it, it was just spilling out of me. And the other day, on Monday, um, I'd booked me haircut because I was going down to London on Monday and I wasn't going to get me haircut in London by one of the fucking amateurs they have down there. I'm going to my guy, right? And uh, Yeah, it, you, you, the biggest TV appearance of your career so far. You yeah. don't want to trust it to some fucking... Turkish barber off the old Kent Road. Like, that's yeah. not going to go well. It's gone fucking wrong. I, I did it how everybody do it. And you want line in eyebrow. It looks good. You look like a uh, Voxel squad. Nova. It's nice. SRI. Um, and he, he, he texted me on Sunday, me barber going, could you come in another day this week? There's been a thing. And I was like, I need to be in tomorrow at the time we've booked. So we're doing that. <laughs> Are any of your other customers <laughs> going to be on the telly, fuck knuckle? No? Cool. I'll see you when I want to be there. So me barber was like, well, look, he had, he'd had a problem. And he was like, one of the other lads in the in the shop's going to have to do it. Joe will do it. But I've had my haircut with Joe before and he's good. So I was like, yes, yeah, sounds. So Joe was like, he's cut me in. He's like, so uh, what's happening, lads? Why are uh, 
why did you need to be in today? And he's <laughs> love it that you're doing the fucking <laughs> just for the audio listeners. Adam was doing. The- <laughs> you're like Kim. It's like it literally like Edward Scissorhands got rheumatoid arthritis. Like ta ta ta. Oh ta 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 ta. I've been cutting hair for too long. You got what done? Rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> rheumatoid. Rheuma- rheumatoid. Yeah. Is it not rheumatoid? It's rheumatoid. Rheumatoid. <laughs> you you said tard because it's linked to the other way. Oh no, we didn't. No, I think it, it's rheumatoid. I've been saying that my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis. I'm always rheumatoid. Rheumatoid. Rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> that guy's a bitchy tard. <laughs> He telling all the That's secrets. The rheumatoid. The rheumatoid. <laughs> I nearly did it. I nearly did the impression. Not going to do it. <laughs> She's in my timbers. So Joe's cutting your hair. I'm I mean, having the most fun. This feels like a big, long, I'm loving this go. So he's, he's got me here. He's, <laughs> 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 He's doing it. Has he got two scissors? <laughs> <laughs> two scissors. What's he shaving with his dick? You've just dribbled on the table. Ladies and gents, about, about to be on Live with the Apollo. <laughs> about to be a household name. Just dribbled on the foot. I feel like an absolute rheumatoid. <laughs> I'm telling everyone. If you go to Barbers and he comes at you like this, <laughs> get out. But who's holding the fucking razor? Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> Little Filipino guy. I got you. Don't tell anyone I'm doing this. Who are you? I'm the rheumatoid. So he goes there. Uh, and apart- I just, I, sh- and I like shouting at him. He went, so why did you need to come in? What have you got going on? I do you like it, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> like, I kept it in from so many people for so long. It just come out. He's like, so, what, what, what do you need to do? I do you like it, Paul? Oh, I see. <laughs> this guy's going to do really well. Chop, chop, chop. I started telling everybody when it got closer. So wow. I was actually driving on Wednesday morning. He's like, where are you going? I was like, I'm going to see Adam. I went, you know yeah, Adam I told my daddy couldn't tell anyone. And when, <laughs> when they got off the train in London... Sam went to me, oh, by the way, literally everyone on the 10.47 a.m. train from Liverpool to London, Houston, now knows that you're doing Live the Apollo because your dad was walking up and down the aisles going, I'm going to London to watch me son record the Apollo. <laughs> <Did it himself. laughs> I, I told everyone in a uh, holiday home in Anglesey because you sent me the message. I went, oh, my God, yes, Rose got the fucking Apollo. And then you went, just telling you and Laura. I was like, right, keep that to yourself. <laughs> keep that to yourselves. So my whole family have known for weeks accidentally. So many people have I told who told not to tell people. Yeah. It's just yeah. the way it is. I yeah. found out when I was next to a field watching kids. feet. I will literally remember... <laughs> <laughs> to mention kids, you've got to keep talking. Oh dear. You never, never help you yourself. You can't pause after kids. You can't kids, pause after kids. Whatever word comes after kids has to be hyphenated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm switching kids fucking feed horses grass and your message came through. And I was literally at the side of Kiri's farm and went, Get in, Rose, got the fucking Apollo. Um, oh. It's so good. Such a good feeling. So that's where I want to be. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the day was crazy. I got told initially that I was going to close. So they record when when you do it. For those who don't know, they record two episodes on the same night with the same audience. So the audience are sort of funneled in at six o'clock, and the show starts. It's meant to start a quarter past seven, but it's half past, especially with the COVID problems and stuff. Yeah. So they're all there for an hour and a half before the show starts. And the first show goes on, the host does half an hour, and then each act's meant to do 20, but everyone overruns. Uh, then they have a break, and then it's the second show. God, the exact- it's a long night, isn't it? Yeah, and, the second- and I had to close the second show. It didn't feel like it, though. Like it I was like a there. long night. I was, I was there from when the doors opened to obviously when he was on. And like the comedy all went, like, I don't know, obviously because it's quality comedy all the way, all the way through. It, it went quick. Like The yeah. show seems to like... Right. Weird. But I, How I- did it feel backstage? I was watching the match. I love it. Do you know what? What's it, backstage like? Um, ba- backstage is a bit dirty. It's a bit sort of like 
this is your dressing room, and it's very minimal. It's, it's not very showbiz backstage at all. Yeah, some of those... I mean, the Hammersmith Apollo is an old theatre. Yeah. Like, we were in Bradford last night with John Bishop, and it's an old fucking... I think it's Victorian, and you're like... It's a bit grim. People think this is really fun, but the dressing room is a bit depressing. Have you been in the Hammersmith Apollo before? No, never. I'd never been in the room. Colossal? It isn't. No. So, Oh, really? For a three and a half thousand seater, you would be forgiven for going, is this 1800? Like, it's still a big, big room. Yeah. But it feels very intimate for a room of that size. I don't want to interrupt you, but Royton on Wednesday was very similar. Oh, yeah. Man. Because it holds... 50. Fuck off. <laughs> but it, honestly, it feels like 33 and two piss knobheads. That's, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just amazing, isn't it? But yeah. again, it's historical venues. Right. <laughs> there wasn't a dressing room. It was just me and Big Lou stood next to a bar getting given Jarg Diet Coke. It's great. <laughs> so it's similar, isn't it? Go on. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. Where were you when you found out I was playing Royton? Were you in a field watching kids or did you like, <laughs> yes! Dan's got to go on. No, I, think I, I think I was on a speedboat in Croatia. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I video called him because I wanted to see him weep. Yeah. <laughs> and I was weeping, dribble. It, was, it was the infection that I'd just got from jumping in the sea. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you, you, I had to be there at four o'clock. You do your sound check. You walk through the garage door. They show you. Um, they, they play your walk-on song, and I had to correct a bit of it. So I asked for Place Your Hands by Reef. And they said, you can't have that because it doesn't clear. Because it's not like going on a, a gig where they just play it off Spotify and everything's fine. It's got to clear for international broadcast in America, Canada, Australia, and the UK. And Reef doesn't, so I sent them a couple more. And then I asked Jamie Webster, could I use his song, This Place, as me walk on? And he was like, I'd fucking love you too. And that clears because he said so. Yeah. But there's, there's a specific lyric that I love in it. So when I did me the sound check in the day, they ask you, talk as low as you're going to talk and shout as loud as you're going to shout, just so we get our levels. You do your practice walk through the door. And when I did it, they just played it from the start of the song. And I was like, could you start it exactly 38 seconds in? And then when I did it later on, they absolutely nailed it. I didn't it. hear it. You, you'll hear it on the, on right, the thing. That's mad. Honestly, only, I've just remembered you have walk-up music. Didn't yeah. hear it. On the video, you talk. You yeah. can't really hear it. No, it's, that, for the, it's for the TV rather than the room. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't hear yeah. it at all in the room. When, whenever stuff's for TV, they deprioritize the people in the room, probably less so for Live at the Apollo. But I've done TV warm-up where I've been talking and I've gone, it's like, you know when people go, is this on? I have genuinely looked towards the sound guy and gone, is this working? And they're like, keep going. Because they don't give a fuck about the studio audience that you're warming up. It's all about the TV show and not interrupting well, there's that. There's big like crane mics blocking people's views and stuff. The don't? thing is, though, yeah, yeah. if those cameras weren't there, you wouldn't know you were recording for the telly. They run it perfectly. Yeah. It is a comedy night in a big theatre. They want people laughing. They want people it's, happy. It's oh, just it's a gig. Like, yeah. It's smooth. Yeah. It's They're not like, ladies and gentlemen, remember, it's a, for the TV, so make sure you're laughing. They just go, ladies and gentlemen, the show's going to start in about 10 minutes. It's going to be a great night. Welcome to Live the Apollo. 10 minutes later, they go, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Jen Brister. And that's it. There's How not, did Jen, Jen do well? Jen did well. Esther Manito did well. The early show on the night was Chris McCausland comparing. That's very good. Sophie Duca and Emmanuel Sanubi. Every, everyone smashed it. Like, how were you feeling when you're behind the thing? Is it like a garage door that opens up and then you go through and it's smoke? Yeah. Right. How The you... smoke's a bit sort of odd because you've got to walk forward whilst you literally cannot see two yards in front of your face. And it's so counterintuitive to be like, I can't see what I'm, whether I'm about to walk into a wall or a door or anything. <laughs> Actually, just... Would that be on Live at the Ball if you came up? <laughs> Fucking hell, that! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, Jesus Christ, I've got asthma in bed. Um, and also, like, there's a, a thing in front of you. So, like, like part of the rig is behind the big garage door. It, there's, like, a big bar, which is, like, a yard back, it, right in front of where you stand, and they go, do not walk forward until that is above your head. Because we've had people before who just twat their heads on it and we have to do the whole bring on again. Oh, right. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, Literally like trying to get out of a car park. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Bzz, now you can go. Yeah, Chill yeah. out. Right, okay. But the, yeah. So one of my favourite moments of the backstage bit, like the, the gig was amazing, by the way. There's not, I, there's not much I can say about the gig, which one little thing I'll tell you in a minute. But <laughs> me, 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 me favourite... Um, my favourite bit of the backstage bit, the show manager or the floor runner or whatever they call them is a Liverpool fan. 
So he had the Liverpool game on his iPad. Because his job, once the show starts, is to tell me when to go and stand behind the garage door. So when there's a Comic-Con, he's got nothing to do. Right? So Esther Manito's on, the girl before me, and I'm watching on the iPad the Liverpool game. Right? We're playing AC Milan. We're 3-2 up. Oh, first of all, we were, it was two all at one point, and I can't control myself when I watch the footy, and Henderson scored a fucking screamer, made it 3-2, and at the side stage of Live at the Apollo, I went, fucking get in! And the entire production team looked at me, and I went, sorry, can't control myself. <laughs> I hear them. Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I can't help Is that the goal that Hendo, as he celebrated, went, Gerard? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him. Right. Um, Have you not watched that on YouTube a few times? No, no you missed that. No, no, no. All right. And bitter. So I'm watching. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> come on. I'm watching the <laughs> next to the fucking. But Esther Manito is having the biggest moment of her career so far, and you can just hear a scouser go, "Fucking get it, lad!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching it right, and I'm stood with the showrunner and Brett Vincent, who's not my agent, but he's a comedy agent, but he's a mate of mine. What? He's fucking everywhere. Well, he he's was. A, he's a manuals agent. He was in. He was at Freight Island on Tuesday. I thought you were going to say he was at Royton. I was like, how the fuck did manage that? <laughs> time turner. I was like, what are you doing here? He was like, yeah, I know the guy who runs it. That guy does not like being at home. Um, he was, Emmanuel Sanubi is... <laughs> felt like a dig. I'm sure he has a lovely... He not like being at home. Sorry. I'm weird, though. He's Emmanuel Sanubi's agent, so he was, he was stood there, and he's watching the Liverpool game with me, because he's a big Crystal Palace fan, but when he was a kid, his first team was Liverpool. Because he was a bit of a glory hunter, which he openly admits. But then he was like, I should support my local team, which is Crystal Palace, who we happen to play this week. Um, but he's watching the game with me and the showrunner. And he died laughing because it got to 90 minutes. So when you're backstage, right, there's there's a wall here, right? And I, I'm watching the, iP- uh, the iPads here, right? And then behind the wall there is the side stage bit. And the stage, the actual stage is over here. So there's a wall, stage is over there. And this is the side, this is the wings, right? And in the wings, there's a big fucking clock as there is on stage. And as you walk on, the clock starts and it goes up from zero to 20 minutes and beyond. So you can see exactly how long you've done. So it's not like getting a light on 18. You can see to the second how long you've done. That's uh, uh, a lot of the bigger gigs. They really like, I honestly think comedy clubs should think about this. Yeah. Because it's... The most obvious thing, like, oh, we've got a red light that flashes randomly. You're like, what if you miss it? And then all of a sudden the show, when you're doing a big gig, a support gig, they're like, that's your time. And it clocks, it ticks down sometimes as yeah. in, get the fuck off. It's zero, zero, zero. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it got to 90 minutes of the game and it come up with three, two up. It's a tense game. And it said five minutes added time. So the, the iPad's there, the wall's there. I'm stood here. And that's the side of the stage where everything is, including the clock. They come up five minutes at a time, and I, I'm just watching the game. I went, oh, for fuck's sake, and looked around the corner at the clock, and Brett Vincent burst out laughing, crying his eyes out, and I went, what the fuck are you laughing at? He went, you're about to make your debut on Live at the Apollo, and all you're asked about is, am I going to get to see the end of the time? <laughs> he was like, no, but it's Champions League. Like, Lander, my agent, at one point come, like, there's 20 minutes before the show starts and I was in my dressing room watching the match on my laptop at that point and he hadn't seen me for a couple of hours and he come in and he, he just burst out laughing and he went, what are you doing? As I'm watching the match. He goes, get your head in the game. I was like, I'm watching the match. And he was like, do you know what? I've never worried less about a client doing live at the Apollo. He went, most people are shitting themselves at this point and you're watching the footy. I was like, because if I wasn't watching the footy, I'd be sat here thinking about what I'm about to do and thinking, I'm missing the match. If I'm watching a match, I'm not thinking about what I'm about to do. And I'm watching the match. Yeah, it's like when people go, when I see people before a gig writing material out, like long form, you're yeah. like, if it's not in 10 minutes before, if it's not in your head 10 minutes before, it's not in. Like, what are you meant to do? Like, sit there with a notepad. Like, I'm a writer of, I write out set structure i don't write bits out yeah i go these are the order of the bits and that helps me but you're not that guy so if you weren't watching the match are you just going to be sitting there going uh, like it's yeah. already in your head yeah. you know what you're doing yeah yeah whatever gets you on that stage relaxed happy to nail it uh got a few hecklers improved a line on stage that got a round of applause that i was like a few no there was a few with a round of applause but the so 
what happened was I you got hecklers. I got a couple. Yeah, like th- three. Yeah. For, at, which, at which points? I did. So, so, yeah. so one guy told me when I I mentioned the football for some reason. Oh, when I did the Victoria's Secret routine because I did that as a backup to the routine I intended to use on the TV, and I know for a fact they're going to use the other routine. Um. But I thought it's a shame to not do that routine at that show and give them the option. Um, when I did that and I go, I'd rather be a footballer, I'd rather play for Liverpool. It got a boo from some people like, that's not my team, boo. So I dealt with that. And then another guy on the front row went, we won 3-2, by the way. And I was like, I know, dickhead. I was watching it backstage. I, w- I haven't come out asking for the results. Dealt with him. It all got big laughs. But the the So if anyone's seen me in the past sort of six weeks or whatever, do stand up. I've been working on this routine uh, about talking to... Uh, it's about how much I hate GP's receptionists and going to the doctor about my bowels, right? So the the routine is... It, it's funny, but it's really silly as well because every time I talk to the doctor, every time the doctor talks in the story... Oh, it's a different accent. I give him a different accent just for for me because I, th- I find it funny. So at one point... I did an Irish accent, but I knew it was a bad one. And I went, I apologise when the Irish people in. And some girl shouted, you should. It was shit. Like the accent, right? So I dealt with it. That's a funny, playful heckle though, isn't it? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then that gave me the idea to improv the other line, which was, and I'm sorry if this, if if you want to wait and watch live the Apollo, just skip forward 40 seconds or whatever. Um, no one's skipping. No, they're not. Uh, but I then did a German accent and I said, I would apologise to all the Germans in the audience, but I feel like you've got a lot more to apologise for than I have. hey And it just come to me. There's a lot of... Guys. She. Guys, yeah. the war. The war. The war. <laughs> if anyone's the, like, what? The murder of six million Jewish people. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Mm. Yeah. They should be sorry. Other, other people as well, not just the, the Jewish. No, but there were six million of them. Yeah. Um, good. I'm really. I was good. I'm glad we got all the facts out there. Carry on. Have you heard the rumor that Hitler actually didn't die and he's in South? If America? you don't finish this story, I'm shoving this up your it's ass. In South America. Yeah, we've already he escaped to South America. We've already done it. We've literally done it on the podcast in the past. Come on, I need this fucking story. He yeah. just got off stage and we got on. It's fine. <laughs> Smash there. And then Hitler was like, "Lad, we won three two. Like, what are you doing, <laughs> Adolf? Adolf is our dad. Go on." <laughs> You're not in South America, lad. Um, I know. I didn't want to miss it. I'm a patron. <laughs> Hitler is a patron. <laughs> would we let Hitler become a patron? Yeah. If he signed up, would ten, we block him? Ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> that's the story. That it, it was a dream come true. No. It was amazing. What? There's definitely more to the story. What? Well, well. Oh yeah, of course. The big, probably like the funniest bit of the story. Oh yeah. So uh, Carl just reminding Adam how to tell stories. That was great. Yeah, no, I just forgot this bit, and it's unbelievable that I forgot it. So in the routine about me hating GP's receptionists, I give her the name Janice, and when she calls me, she's like, hello, it's Janice here from Hornspit Medical Centre. So when I come off stage, I found out that what had happened at the back of the room (laughs) is Anthony, who produces the Apollo, had gone up to Chris Lander, my agent, and said, is Janice real? So Landa went and said to Sam and Carl, everyone's dying laughing at the routine. Is Janice real? And him and Sam, I just went, yeah, it's fucking great, isn't it? And he went, nope. And then ran away. And I was so like, so he went to Anthony and was like, yeah, she's real. So when I come off her to, to the side of the stage, Anthony goes, is Janice real? And I went, sort of. And he went, because if she's real, you can't name her. You can't name her. And I went, well, her name's not Janice. Like, I don't know a name. I just gave her the name Janice. And it's when the I right the medical center. And I went, but the medical center is. And he went, on you go. He went, you need to do that again. We'll tell the audience we've got to do a pickup. He said, just do it like one, once or twice. And just say, well, hello, it's Janice here from the medical center. That's what I need you to do. And I spent <laughs> 10 minutes just saying, hello, over it's Janice here from the medical over. center. Over and over and over again. And the more I did it, the more funny it got. At one point I said, I feel like Stuart Lee. And I felt that deserved a lot more than it actually got in the room. We laughed in the corner. Yeah. yeah. It's um, So they sh- you'd finish. The show had finished. The people show had were finished. Leaving. People were leaving. Some people stayed. And then they went, sorry about this, guys. 
Adam's got to do a couple of pickups. How many times? So was there someone going, do it again? No, I just, they told me to just do it once or twice. So, and I did it 24 times. Yeah. <laughs> so the show was finished. People just were standing up. and started filibustering. Have you heard about Adam Rowe? Yeah, he did. Apparently, he did two and a half hours at Live at the Apollo. <laughs> but he, came, saying, he came on twice. Hello, the Apollo. it is Janice <laughs> from the medical center. It was, uh, yeah. Hello it was, there, it's Janice but like, from the medical center. <laughs> it's still shit, fuck you. <laughs> of, all, like, of all the people to say the wrong thing, when it's your job to say the wrong thing, you said yeah. the wrong thing at the Live at the Apollo. It was perfect. Yeah. And Easy. Gina Lyons, who's a mate of mine who came, she, she filmed me doing all the pickups. Sam, Sam filmed well. me yeah. doing all the pickups. It's a funny thing to have, and it's a funny story to have. But yeah, it went well. It's uh, it's already opened a couple of doors to a few opportunities. Like everyone had a good gig, but Lander rang me yesterday. He did a lot of schmoozing after the show. Me and Lander have a very good relationship where we can be very honest with each other. So I and I need that because I never want to feel like my agents blowing smoke up my ass. But he was like, I spoke to a lot of people in the room, and there was sort of no question as to who they thought was. The best act on the bill. Man and the match. Across Man the, the match. night. And it wasn't close. So, we did it. And let's hope it's not the last time we did it. I am. I'm just going to say this. I feel so fucking proud of what you've done there. And I, uh, incre- it's a really nice feeling to watch someone who you work with and your mates with just like very obviously and visibly take a fucking level up like a computer game. And there's been points in my life where I have felt a bit dismissive of this stuff because I think jealousy is roughly what you'd call it. But I was, and at the time, I never felt jealous. I felt like, oh, fuck it. You know, I, I just d- didn't engage with a lot of stuff. And it's not that I was like bitter. It was just like in your head, you're like, I just want to, I want to do my stuff and not worry about everyone else. It's a human reaction that yeah. you have to override. And I've, I've mentioned this to you before. I had to do that long ago in my career. It wasn't about TV and stuff. It was about getting club work when my mates were getting it and I wasn't. And it's the same thing, but to the nth degree. When when you know how good you are and you know you would absolutely destroy live at the Apollo and then you see someone who you've gigged with, who you know you're better at stand-up than, and then they get it, you go, mm, that's annoying. It's I that, deserve it's that. that. It's that. It's not jealousy. It's a, like a frustration. You're like, ah, why am I butting my head at this like glass ceiling when other people don't have it? It's a really nice feeling to get to a point in your life. I don't know if it's perspective or whatever, or the success of this podcast. I've had two of my best mates do Live at the Apollo within 24 hours, and I couldn't be more pleased. And uh, Scott, Scott Bennett did it uh, the night before Adam, and then you did it. And that day, I was having... Uh, it was just really weird. I was just having like so many like fucking us. There's a bit in, I don't know if you've seen Goodfellas where Henry Hill finds out that they've robbed the Luf- Lufthansa flight. In the shower. And he's like, Jimmy! Jimmy! <laughs> yeah. I had that vibe going on. Fucking <laughs> Rowie Parks, lad! Me and Sam couldn't sit still. But no one put it in the WhatsApp group. I know we've got a podcast and I know we wanted to tell this story. And that bullshit at the start of this episode where we were egging it out, I that genuinely started like I needed to hear that story. I wanted all the details, but you didn't. I know you've had a big day, but there was nothing in the WhatsApp group. So I was like, what happened? And like, well, I, I, genu- just, I love it was I a busy day. hearing it. It was a busy. So yeah, man. Like, do you know in a few days before it? Because obviously I was the, on day three of the recording and they only record for three days. And I knew everyone who was doing it and everyone who was doing it. I was like of a night checking their social media to see how what they said about it, and no one posted about it. And I knew you were allowed to once you'd been on. Oh, is that the rule? Yeah, so they have a rule where the audience aren't allowed to know who they're about to see, and that's been since day dot. Since Jack D was the host and they had a special guest, okay. they, they've they never let anyone announce who it's about to be. If you go to see Live at the Apollo, you're going to see Live at the Apollo. Tell them about Vittorio. Oh, yeah, Vittorio was there. And didn't know Adam was on. But didn't know I was on. Just he had was, tickets. He was watching, he was like, oh, I'm lagging here a little bit because he was the last... And she went, please welcome to the stage, Adam Rowe. And he said, him and his Aaron missus, McCannon is, like, lost yeah. their shit. Like, what the fuck? Because they didn't even know. know. No. They, and he's uh, just I love, amazing. I was love Vittorio. He's, he said his head just fell he's off. He's so one of the lids, isn't he? Um, so, yeah, you, you, but I, I checked everyone's social media and I was like, why are people not screaming that they've done it? And it took me a day to do it because you come yeah. off. You get told, oh, you're welcome in the artist bar, open bar, drink whatever you want. You can, I, you're, you, I, you're only meant to take two people in, and I begged for a third ticket. I had nine tickets to the show. 
Um, they, but they were like, you can't bring everyone backstage. It's just, it, no, you can't no. do it. It's only two. And I was like, well, me cousin Dolly's coming with her fiance. They're, they're, I can leave them as a two. Me mate Josh is coming with his missus. I can leave them as a two. Fiance newly? Yeah, fiance, sorry. Uh, Gina's coming with her husband. I can leave them as a two. And I could actually tell them as a six to go to the bar that we're going to go to afterwards. Yeah. And and Rebecca came. She didn't end up coming to the bar anyway, but Rebecca came with her friend, a, a mate of mine. So I was like, I, it, she, she just ended up going home. But I was like, they're all twos. The, the other three people were me dad, Carl, and Sam. So initially, <laughs> initially, well, I was like, me dad's got to be next to me all night. And then if I was only allowed two in, it was going to be him. And I was going to tell Sam to go with Dolly. Yeah, and you were not going to get sex for a long time. No, I've been plus one for a decade. That no, no, it, it wouldn't. Sa it. Sam would have been like, if I couldn't have got a third, she's actually quite sad and would have been yeah. like, I get it. Because I would have gone, I've got to keep my dad with me because he's my yeah, responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a producer. And we're about to be in a room full of producers. And long term, it's... Yeah, but second to the fact that we've spoke about this for 10 years. She's going to watch this, Carl. <laughs> Doesn't matter. She knows the fucking... Well, yeah. yeah, so I, I said to Lander, please, can you just get me a third ticket? And he he, 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 he just about managed Mate, to be like, look, you can have a third. I love Lander. I'd sign with Lander just for little moments like that where he got you a third. It's, it's almost like weirdly, massively important. Obviously, getting you on live at the Apollo is pretty fucking good as well. It was... Um, uh, yeah, you know, when people go... Live your life. Don't spend your time like taking videos or on your phone. That's actually a very valid point, isn't it? You might do a shit ton of TV over the years. It's almost like your first gig, isn't it? I'm glad that that you went out, lived it, went to the after party, went to a bar, and that you weren't like, oh my god, my social's kicking off. You can do that in the days after, can't you? Like, and actually do the thing, live yeah, it. I tell you what, I've had a couple of big opportunities in my life now, and not to seem. I said this to him a couple of weeks ago. This is not to dismiss what I've just done. And I it, it sounds a little bit arrogant, but hopefully our listeners understand sort of what I mean by it. It didn't feel as big as the Bill Bear stuff. And I'll tell you why. Since I've started stand-up, I've always been like, if I work hard enough, I might get to do Live with the Apollo at some point. I never thought, oh, I'll get to open for my favourite comic at the Royal Albert Hall. So that was such a bigger surprise. This was sort of like... Something I, I've always tunnel visioned and focused on. So I think what that gave me, it was, and I mean this in a good way. I, when I, when I opened for Bill Bear, I can't really remember once being on stage. It was all a blare. It was all, let's. Wow, me, you just hyped. Get, no, let's get through it so you can say you've done it, sort uh, of thing. Okay. It's so big. When I've done the stand up sketch show, a couple of times it was, oh, this is Telly doing it. Roast battle. I don't really remember doing the battle. Like, I, I just... I, my memory of roast battle is watching it. Like, after it come out. I very, very deliberately tried to be in the moment. And I can remember every second that I was on stage. And it's the first time I've truly managed to do that. Uh, and one thing I haven't really told anyone that isn't close to me yet, which I'll, I'll, I'll just say now for our listeners, is the, the lovely thing about getting to do it on Wednesday was that it was eight. So I, I when I grew up, it was my mum who got me into stand-up. She introduced me to Richard Pryor. I had a load of stand-up DVDs, but Live at the Apollo was the thing that we watched together. Like, I remember watching Jason Manford on it, and we immediately tried to find a way to get tickets for him. And then we drove past on a bus, past the Royal Court Theatre, and his big poster was on it, like, a couple of weeks after he'd done it. And Wednesday was eight years to the day since she died. So to get to do it on that anniversary was very special. And Sam... Nearly fucking, <laughs> you know, right there. I nearly went then. Sam so, nearly ruined the fucking death. hell. I nearly went. <laughs> Sam nearly, uh, uh, you know, this might do it. So, have Sam, you got it? Yeah. Oh, lad. So, Sam nearly fucking killed me. First of all, I'll say this what I intended to do, what I wanted to do was end the set by going, ladies and gentlemen, I got into the show via my mum, and it's eight years since we lost her, so this was for her. But I didn't trust myself to not get wobbly lipped and go, so I didn't do it. But when I got to the hotel, Lad, wait until you read this. Oh, mate. This will fucking <laughs> When I got to the hotel... You're messing with my man. Sam had printed off, like, every picture she could find that was related to stand-up for me and spread it all around the room with balloons and stuff. But she gave me this, which is... It says... It's a wallet card. It's a metal wallet card. And it says, Fate brings people together no matter how far they, far they are apart. 
Live at the Apollo, the 15th of the 9th, 2021. Uh, and that's on the back of it. And on the other side, it's a picture of me mum. And she said, I wanted her to be with you, so make sure it's in your pocket when you're on stage. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Laura didn't do that for me for writing. <laughs> I, bitch. <laughs> I fell apart when she gave me that. Like, literally fell apart. And when I showed it to my dad, he did as well. Yeah. Um, it well, was quite a special days. Thing. Should we have a break? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes! You know there's a disturbance in the force when it's me doing an ad read because I don't do this shit normally. But Manscaped have dropped a new ad. It's important. We love these guys. They've supported us. So support them. This ultimate package includes the amazing lawnmower 4.0. Manscaped, the leaders in male grooming, have done it again. Two million men worldwide that trust Manscaped with the new performance package 4.0. By going to manscaped.com, use the code WORD20 for 20% off and free shipping. That's specific to the lids to this podcast. Inside this package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. First off, the new Performance Package 4.0 includes the new lawnmower. This trimmer is insane, and I dare say the greatest ball trimmer ever. Their fourth-generation trimmer features a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. It also has this amazing LED light, so if you're a maverick and you shave your balls in the dark, you can see where you go. And as I said, the Weed Whacker is amazing. It uses a 9,000 RPM motor-powered 360-degree rotary dual blade system you get all of this kit within the performance package 4.0 and then seal the deal with manscapes liquid formulations their crop preserver ball deodorant for before leaving the house and the crop reviver ball toner manscapes even throw in two free gifts with every performance package 4.0 get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code word 20 treat yourself go around the house see what else you can shave but shave everything carl can you shave pets don't shave you pet's balls. Just use it on yourself. 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com using the code WORD20. Aye? I just want to... Oi! Hey! You're going to do the half triathlon with me? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, cool. No. Can half three? Can we not do the um, Olympics that we've been planning to do? The athletics thing we're going to put on Patreon? I feel like we should do that as a warm up. I am genuinely worried about running in like a hundred meter sprint. Like, I, why don't I'd, we try and break Eddie Hazard's record for the most marathon run in back to back days? Why don't you do that <laughs> and I'll be there with a water bottle? At apparently, the end of one right? Of apparently, on your fifteenth marathon, it starts getting easier. Yeah, you just got to get through that. A lot of people say that. <laughs> There's a hump. There's the fourteen marathon hump. <laughs> Once you've done that fourteenth marathon. On 14 consecutive days. It's easy. Yeah, yeah. You're getting your body used to it. Your body's like, oh, we're doing a yeah, marathon yeah, yeah. again. Oh, or see. you die at like the third <laughs> or fourth marathon and then everything feels easy because you're dead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of getting it for, for the marathon. And then getting a special app made that puts me phone in front of me so I can watch like a Netflix series while I'm doing it. Right. Yeah. Just like binge watch Breaking Bad while you're doing it. I've got VR there. You can have my Oculus if you want. Yeah, there we go. Uh, no, because I need to be able to see the road as well. God, don't be stupid. You're being, take it silly. <laughs> silly. Silly. Yeah, he's silly. Made, serious, me. you know. Um, no, I don't want to because I'm fat and 40. And I'm all right with that. Yeah, but you, you'll you be thin and 41. If oh, you do you're it. fab and 40. Triathlon is a bit of running, a bit of cycling, a bit of swimming. Yeah. <laughs> where where you run on the road, fine. Done that. I know roads. Yeah. Trust them. Like them. You cycle on the road. Bike. I'd have to buy some baboon bottoms yeah. because I have a, a, a tentative gooch. Yeah. I ve I, that can get sore quick. Mm -hmm. So what kind of saddle are we talking about? I want a padded saddle. I just want... I think you can do whatever you want. Right. Bring your own bring, saddle. Bring your own bike. And then where are we swim I'm getting on my stabilizers. Where, yeah, cool. Where, <laughs> fucking hell, that's a great episode of Breaking Bad. They're making meth. Whoa, would have gone then. <laughs> um, where, you, where do you swim? I'm thinking the Atlantic. I'm out. <laughs> Um, the, the length of it, the width of it, sorry. No, you just do, I think you just do like two lengths. Have you researched where this half triathlon is? What? 
You just think it's in the Atlantic. I'm putting it on. Oh, you're putting it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. How long is the length of the Atlantic? No. <laughs> I say like the length of an Olympic sized swimming pool. Oh, but it's in the Atlantic. Yeah. So you can do it in Ireland. Oh. You can do it in Ireland then. You can do it wherever you want, yeah. Right. Yeah. But I want to do it in the Atlantic. Yeah, but Ireland's got the Atlantic. Oh, cool. Yeah, sound. I didn't know that. That's good to know. Where yeah. did you think the Atlantic started? <laughs> did you think off the Mersey's the Atlantic? <laughs> no, I didn't. I just, I just knew it was a bit of water. <laughs> yep. What's the other side of... Gonna have a big year in television, this lad. And it's his intelligence that's got him there. I thought it was a big bit of water. I risked the Atlantic. That would be fucking great. Off the you west coast of Ireland. To... Off the west coast of Ireland. Yeah. yeah. Is it, yeah? Where's the Pacific? Um, off the west coast of America. And going towards... The other side. Uh, Japan. <laughs> Why are you saying Japan? I just... Uh, <clears throat> I just had a bit of a key lime pie in my throat. Japan. Cool. Is that a segue? Yeah, my friend's... <laughs> uh, my friend Helen uh, is the wife of one of my really good mates in Chester. And she's a professional is she chef. chef. She's a very wonderful woman. <laughs> <laughs> what, are the, what are you That's all encompassing. I was, I was just, She's a wonderful woman. I was just trying to make you uncomfortable and it worked. Uh, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me well, she makes fire. Cracking cake. ass. Um, <laughs> I, I know. John knows. He knows. Soggy He's seen bottom. it. <laughs> she's a sous chef. No, it's not a sous chef. Pastry chef. Yeah. And she's going on her own and doing it from home. So she's doing oh, American, American baking. I don't know what the joke is. Sous chef. <laughs> nice. Like it. She's a Helen chef. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she's baking in the Atlantic, which is in Chester. Um, so she started Crave Bakes. She's just sent us some key lime pie that I've had a slice of, and it's fucking amazing. I'm eating a cookie, and it's fire. So if you are in and around the Chester area, Ellesmere Port, or anywhere in the South Wirral or uh, <coughs> Cheshire, give it a look. Crave Bakes, C R A V E, Crave Bakes, and that's Crave Bakes Chester at Outlook Outlook dot com. And Crave Bakes, low <laughs> underscore Chester. I've fucked that up. Can we put their little things on the... Yeah, it'll be on the screen. Absolutely. Oh, all right. Uh, They're going to be the official sponsor of the Rowie Triathlon half as well. Because that's half what you triathlon. want, isn't it? Just at the end of the swimming, a big slice of key lime pie. You, you have to... So we'll we'll make it like an interesting triathlon because it's quite boring normally, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so... <laughs> What's this we have started doing? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> They're very agreeable. Thick as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, shuffle brothers. <laughs> so you, while you're doing it, you've got to eat one of their things. So you've got to run, however long it is. Google triathlons. <laughs> <laughs> I will when I get round to. Oh, this. you mean it? Like we'll get we'll get Helen on the side. You know when they usually give water to the runners. Yeah, she, yeah. No, She's no, no, you get it at the start. It's like an egg and spoon race. But by the end of it, you can't have anything left on your spoon. She's got like pecan pie. So she does American desserts. Uh, I'm going to commission some. Pie for the uh, Super Bowl party that I will be having in my garden office. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh no, Can I come? A... Yes. 10K run it is. Um, what pie? Um, I think apple. A bit of a, I love apple pie. I think um, maybe Me blackberry. Black pie? Yeah. Okay. Meat and potato? <laughs> <laughs> That's a safety one. <laughs> meat and potato pie. Is it? <laughs> Imagine serving meat, because pie in America is all sweet, isn't it? Oh, hang on, hang, hang on. He was joking. Hang on. Did he say that on purpose? <laughs> Carl, you've done it again. Bloody hell. Sarcasm. A <laughs> little bit facetious. But he said sincerely. That's a savoury one. <laughs> fucking knobhead. They joke can joke. Well, I've got a chippy for the fucking lovely sweet pie. <laughs> I love going to your Mars for their lovely sweet pie. Oh, they don't sell. No, no, no. They don't oh, sell. Hell, they, don't know. they don't sell cherry pie and chips. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it again. Oh, in your web. Why of, are you on it? In your web of banter. <laughs> this one. I have to keep an eye on this one. They call me anti comedy or uncle. <laughs> <laughs> you meant anti spell A N T I. Yeah, but you can hear it. Oh, my <laughs> lord. Aunt. Wow. Wow Wowee. What do you think, Finn? <laughs> Shut up, Finn. Um, We're doing a comedy night. Do you know how nice I am to Finn off mic? It's sickening. No, it's marginally different to 
On mic. He's a lovely lad. Just shut up. <laughs> Stop asking for a mic for We're Finn. doing a comedy Not night. Oh, oh yes. A comedy night. It's going to be at the end of a triathlon. You've got to do 20 <laughs> minute sets. Go on, yeah, everyone who buys a ticket has to do one of the triathlon events. Yeah. So this is Sunday the 26th of September in Liverpool. Pins Social Club. Uh, one of the hottest spots in town at the minute. Um, ticket link is in the description. I'm on. Dan's on. Sean Walsh is on. It's going to be a brilliant night. Carl's going to be running the show for us. It's one of them. When we used to do Secret Sundays, me and Carl, this one is not so Secret Sunday is because it's next week and there's a lot of tickets to <laughs> and sell. And it's at one of the hottest spots in town. Is that right? Just to <laughs> confirm what you said. It's one of the hottest spots in town. It's groovy. Yeah. It's a groovy spot. It groovy. It's going to start It's pretty early, hip. Though. I hear it's hip. hip. It's, it's an early start. We're going to start at 6 p.m. Doors will open at 5 p.m. If it's sunny, it's a rooftop comedy show. Unbelievable. The roof's unbelievable. If it's a bit of a shit weather, we've got a space inside that we can move it to. But for now, it will be billed because the weather's apparently meant to be good. Rooftop comedy of pins. Not so secret Sundays. Me, Dan, Sean Walsh, and some other cunt who I'll book next week. I'm going to do Pedo Island. Good. I'm not letting it go. And Finn's coming if you want some Finn dick. For fuck's sake. You're going to be all right. <sighs> Ruined it, isn't it? Mm. Can we get you laid, Finn? It'd be so nice to get you laid. Bring yeah. your pussy. Bring some pussy for Finn. Yeah. Bring your pussies. <laughs> Where are they getting them from? The pussy cupboard. The, the trousers. Uh, I'm in vagina. <laughs> it's, all, it's part of the poddy. Poddy? poddy? <laughs> ah, he said it wrong! Yes! He said it wrong! You've lost face! You've lost face! Sit down! Yeah, check it in the description if you want to come and see it. And uh, they'll have been all over social media. Uh... Before you've even seen this. I'm sick. One of the hottest places in social media. Um, this is from Anon. Now, this guy didn't want it to be Anon, but I have made it Anon because I think it's a bit salacious. Oh. Wag wag lids. What does salacious mean? Just, it's controversial. There's a lot of people who could be annoyed about this sort of gossipy. It's a, He's revealing stuff, potentially. So I just don't want the comeback for him. So Wag Wagley has got a question for you. It's about my cousin. We shall call him Lewis, as that's his name. Anyway, I've just been sent a load of screenshots from my mates of my cousin and his best mate who've been doing OnlyFans together and have advertised it all over Twitter with loads of public pics and vids of them dominating guys, wanking each other off and filming each other piss. Is he gay? Yeah. How the fuck am I meant to look at him and his fiance? and their kids in the eye at the next family get-together. Is there any way that I can delete this from my mind forever? What the actual fuck? Live your best life and all of that, but what the actual fuck? So. She one can man off on the internet. He has been doing a little bit of the, and here's one of the Twitters. Um, it's, uh, he says in his uh, description, he's six foot three, 270 pounds, 13 size feet, a straight cash master put on earth to fuck your minds and wallets. Uh, just to let you know, I will be changing my Twitter handle <laughs> to Dan Nightingale, cash master. Straight cash master put on earth to fuck your minds and wallets. Arrogant, Succe successful all round better. Top 0.8% of uh, OnlyFans. What is this? Every time I see an OnlyFans, like everyone's in the top 0.4%. It's a flex, isn't it? It's way one of the best. Right. Just a flex. Right. It's because there's some absolute trolls on it. Uh, yeah. I'm in the top 85. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. like, it's easy to be in the top 1%. Top as long as you've got a big point. dick and you rub it properly. But he's not gay. What? He's not gay. He, he is. No, but he's not. If you no, wank no. men off on the internet, if you, you If you wank men off on the internet, you are. <laughs> yeah. His wife, oh, fiance, no. doesn't know he's gay. No, 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 no. He no. is smoking the pipe with a fist. No, he's gay for pay. That's <laughs> he's different. He's smoking the pipe with a fist. He's a businessman. No, he's a business. Would you do it? What? Would you do it? For seven and eight thousand patrons, would you it's a weird patron exclusive? For twenty isn't grand it? a month, would you wank men off on the internet? I would genuinely think about it. For twenty grand a month, I'd have a think. Right. Who's dick? His. Mine. I need more. What about Finn's? Oh, Finn's got a weapon though, hasn't he? Yeah. Just in terms of the physical labour, it's gonna look at him. You can tell it's massive. Yeah. It's no, I don't know. I don't. I mean, is he gay though? Yeah. Wank men off gay, isn't Huh? His fiance is a lady? Has, has that been made clear? Yeah, I think 
Well, well, he said fiance, and he said he got kids. So the heteronormative way society works, you would assume that he, you know, she was smoking a pipe with a pussy, and that's how they got the kids. <laughs> you would assume that. <laughs> hey, Cashmaster, do you want to? <laughs> do you want to conceive? What are you thinking? I'm thinking about smoking a pipe with a pussy. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of wanking off Kev. <laughs> <laughs> So they record each other. What did he say? Wanking each other off. Dominating men. I'm pissed. Dominating men. Yeah, dominating is like when you sort of like forcefully bombing them. No, not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily. You know, I think he would have said with the bum bum, wouldn't he? If it was the bumming. Force bum, it's called. <laughs> I don't think the you don't picked up the little hip shift you did under the table. And you're like, doing the bumming. You need the to really go for it. You're like, fucking get here. No, I don't think they do bumming. I think they're like... Dominate men as in, ah, uh, you're fucking... I do it. Do you know what? I'm, what? Not, I'm not wanking off men, but if someone wants to record me piss and I have to just be a knobhead to some gay guys, I'd think about that for 10 Gs a month. Be like, you yeah, are such... Yeah, wanking off men. Right. And this is the one we're talking... This is the problem, innit? No, I'm saying... Everything that's... else is fine. It's the wanking off men and, and pot- like, we don't know for sure, the potential woman. I think that is... Uh, that's His wife. That's crossing the line. His fiance needs to meet. But the bumming's not happening online. So you it let's we are adding that layer unnecessarily. Yeah. The dominated men is just being like, you're a fucking That's a gateway though, isn't it? To the bumming. You you're right, Carl. Wanking off men is a gateway <laughs> to gay sex. You right. I never saw it like that. Like weed, I always just thought weed thought, leads to heroin. I thought wanking off men was like a gateway to Nando's, but actually you're right. It's more of a build up to like shagging men. Sticking it in your mouth to put it in like put in your bum bum. Smoking a pipe with a face. Or the smoking bomb. a pipe with a bum hole. No, I don't think he's good. I think he's just a businessman. I think, you know, that's how you build, <laughs> oh, that's so that's no, how you build a brand. You build Look, a brand. There's no way. Because otherwise, you've got to remember. He could shag women on the internet. I can do the same thing. It's the same money. To And sell to who? Straight men. No, I don't think men sell a lot of OnlyFans to straight there's men. There's lots of men selling OnlyFans to men. What, how? Being and like, section. watch me bang this bird. No, that's the ga- the game. Why don't the girl? Oh, but I'm saying if you get up, he's doing it with a partner, isn't he? Yeah. So you just make, make the partner a woman. No. Oh uh, right, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the star. Yeah, the but show that's is cheating. That the star of the show is then the woman. She'd be the one making all the money. You're just a fucking extra in a porn film if you're a fella. Yeah, with big feet. Right. I just think he's choosing it to be a man. But here's what here's my problem with it is you're saying he's definitely not bumming. There's no way they're getting to the end of domination and not fucking going for it. Because why would you, like, you do, you don't watch a film and then not do the last five minutes, do you? I'd be like, oh, I don't care how it ends. No, but it, I don't think he's gay, so he's not going that far. He's, he's just doing a bit of wanking. Man <laughs> off. No, I think, I think he'd be like, oh, bumming's well gay. This is business. <laughs> I really need a piss. Get the camera. <laughs> Kev, get the camera. And if someone wants to record me, if you can't see me face... I'm having a piss. I can see his face. Right. Can I put this in the video? No? Can we? I don't know. It's on Twitter. I'll link maybe... It's, I'll tell you what. What's the at? I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll take away his name and the at, and you can have a look at everything else. So... Yeah. He hasn't paid for this. Advertising, actually. He can get fucked. <laughs> he owes us money. We really? At least a free video. <laughs> he owes me a free wank. Yeah. A free video? Yeah. What do you want? Domination I want, or piss? I want to. I want to watch to the end and see if they do any bumming. I wonder. Could settle an argument. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what sort of the domination. I wonder what you could get away with, like if you'd be like, "You listen, you, you're gay. Come and play me on FIFA, and I'll fucking twat you." Yeah. And like you film that, and the gay guy's like, "I don't even know the buttons." Showing the pad of his ass. I think he's more like, get your head in that fucking pillow and I don't want to see your face for the next half an hour. Fucking shut up. Don't care how much it hurts. Some of them... There's a third knuckle. Some of them... Some of the dominatrices is just women like going, clean my fucking kitchen. And they're like, yes, mistress. That's like two for one. You're getting money and housework. I've got a story about this. I'd be into that. Have you? I think Laura would be fuming. I have, yeah. Um, One of Selica's... Mow my fucking lawn. A listener, possibly. One of Selica's friends... Got a message on Facebook or Instagram, one of them, of a man uh, saying, can I get some pictures off you and videos and I'll pay you? She's like, no. He's like, right, well, I'm into um, I'm into feet. I just want feet pictures. It doesn't have to be your face. Right. It doesn't have to be anything like that. Yeah. It's 
good money. And she was like, she spoke to her boyfriend and he was like, I might be, I might be getting a sorry wrong on the other end of it. And she's like, yeah, You don't know me. the last five minutes? And she got bummed. <laughs> she oh, didn't get bummed. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so on. he said, what he's into is rock ports. So he bought had a pair of rock ports on Facebook Marketplace and they came to an house. He said, I want some videos of you walking up and down your house in rock ports. Um, like POV kind of thing, like walk up to it. Uh, and I want you to smush cheeseburgers into your rock port boots and send me videos and pictures. This is getting me hard. I'm into this. I've, I've, I've got, I'll, show you the, I'll show you the pictures. I afterwards. actually prefer kickers and cheese baguettes. but So he transferred the money for the rock ports, money for the cheeseburgers, and then the pay for the videos. Do you know what I find most offensive about that story? That he got rock ports off Facebook Marketplace. Finn, have you got a story? Finn's getting the mic! Finn's getting the mic! This is going to end weird. <laughs> Ladies and gents, Finn's life. I feel like I might have told this before, but I sold foot picks in uni. Oh, I'm bored of this. I've heard this. <laughs> have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, fine. His, no, I'm, his, joking. His, uh, I'm joking. Did I tell it? Yeah. I don't think so. I definitely know that you've sold. I'm sure you've done it on. Did you sell it to a man or a woman? Yeah, because we called him a sex worker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, here's a... Here's a a few weeks after that, my now ex uh, also did that, but was on Skype with a guy and telling him he was like a piece of shit and all that jazz. But she checked with me first, so it was all right. And I'm, telling, I'm telling you right now, I will, man, woman, I nearly said child, I'm not doing chilled, children, chilled, I'm not doing chilled. No, let it go, let it go, let him have one. Uh, if you want me to just be a knobhead here, I'm available. Yeah. Import, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be like, you fucking dick. What how would you go? How far would you go, though? What if it was an ethnic minority and they wanted you to call them a racial slur? I will use racial slurs, but not the right one for their ethnic minority. Right. So if there's, like, a Chinese guy, I'll be like... Oh. Do you use the N-word on a Chinese guy? Yeah, because I don't think that's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> we just done on cheeseburgers. Because what is he going to be like? Hey, that's not either of our words. Well, that last section was problematic for me just for that last. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, yeah, the, that's, uh, you know, I don't want to be racist for pay. I'd be a bit gay for pay, but not racist for pay. No. I See, if I if I got sort of talked into that, which would be possible, do you know what I mean? Gay for I, pay? No, like the insulting them. Oh, right. Right. If I got talked into it and they asked for the racial slur, I would immediately be like, this is a setup and they're going to try and extort me. He's trying to get me to say this word because it's his kink, but it's not. He works for like Panorama or something. <laughs> what would the Panorama be called? Panorama! You have any, your Apollo's not even been out yet. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm big now. I'm pretty fucking big. I'm pretty big. Adam Rowe, the Zoom racist. Panorama tonight, 10 o'clock. Hey, I did 25 pickups. Panorama, I'm on their radar. <laughs> no, but like, it could be like, Dear Adam. Panorama looks into the systemic racism in Zoom meetings or something. Yeah. And they're just trying to get some good fucking... Systemic racism in Zoom. Would they show the entrapment of the video? No, like it's just more show it out of context, exactly. Right. It'd just be me on, on a Zoom <laughs> with some Filipino man calling him a Filipino cunt or whatever. <laughs> that famous Filipino slur. <laughs> <laughs> hey! No! That's off word. <laughs> the f word... <laughs> I'm not, sure, I'm not sure you're on the, on the radar of Panorama right now. <laughs> not saying. You yeah. think you're going to get fake shape? Well, that, that's how they get you. You think, you think oh, fake they'd shake? never be after me. Listen, Adam, I love your comedy, but I'm into some pretty weird shit. Will you come to my hotel room in Dubai and call me a dirty Jew? <laughs> it's what I'm into. No, but that's what Jeffrey Epstein apparently used to do, isn't it? He used to get, like, <laughs> big, like, government figures to and shag entrap kids, them. though? Yeah. Not to say, like, Jew. Yeah. Well, due with a bit of stank on it, it's a problematic, isn't it? What, on Pedo Island? Yeah. Feed into the beast. <laughs> but they're also like billionaires, they're not Adam Rowe. No. Like, like, comedy is like the last bastion of courage against the system. So maybe they're trying to take us down so we can't, you know, tell the truth. The last bastion <laughs> of courage against the system. And if you want to see some of that last bastion of courage, come to Pins on Sunday the 26th of September where I'll be talking about drugs, my dick, and pedo island. Back to you, Adam. 
Um, why do you reckon you'd be on Panorama if you got stung? <laughs> you well, probably for being gay for pay, because it looks fucking <laughs> easy. I'm not doing bumming, I'll just do a little... As, so, as long as I've got this, a smaller dick than me. this a bit of bum fingering? Is that what you were doing? I, want, I will do men with smaller willies than me, and I'll be like, mate, that's pathetic. And I'm like, what have you got? Slightly better than this. Yeah. Oh, is, are you wanking them off? <laughs> I'll do a wank off, yeah. I, I thought this was fingering his bum hole. I thought that's what you were doing. No, Morse code. Everything with, every, everything's about the bum with you. <laughs> doop, 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 doop. What? No, everything's about the bum with you. What's wrong I'm with just that? a bit of wanking. You have any bum based? I'm, I'm, yeah. You, oh, is it, why can't you just be a bit of wanking and be like, you're a knobhead? Yeah. <laughs> knobhead. I need a waz. Two seconds, watch it. Knobhead. That's my, that's, I do this. Yeah. Stay away from the bum bum. What, what do you reckon Laura would think? If you, if you genuinely realise, <laughs> like, look, I've been given an opportunity to wank men off on the internet. That's all I've got to do, though. I've got to call him a cunt and rub his knob. I think she'd be like, is it behind a paywall? Mm. I think she's all right. I think she understands the Patreon system. It's, pay it's paying a lot of the bills. She'd be yeah. like, it's just another layer of that. No, you can't. You, you go to our Patreon. You what? Give him another site a percent. I think that might damage our Patreon. <laughs> if everyone gets an email every Thursday morning, I fucking love Wednesdays and Saturdays, but <sighs> Gay Thursday's a nightmare with Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why he started with Steve. I had to drum up business. <laughs> First in, last out. Just wank all the guests off. Yeah. That could be some Patreon bonus content. Oh my God. I'd pay to not see me wank off Ishan Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Be like, oh. <laughs> so, so what was the question? I can't remember. Um, why well, he's wanking people off until the fiance. I think you've got it here. You've got to make. You've got to speak to the lad and ask him. Does his fiance know? And if his fiance doesn't know, I think you've got to grass him up. Grow the fuck up. It's a bit of online content. Don't matter. Just shake him in his wrong hand. Don't be like I've fucking seen where that you one's fucking been. Fucking ignore it. No, keep yourself well <laughs> away from this. You're telling me you can ignore it if Josh, our friend Josh, I wouldn't go and ring his bed. You wouldn't tell it at all. Not at all. Man. Well. Not one bit. You're not particularly... Like, okay. If it was you, would I tell Sam? Yeah. I wouldn't. You should. Why? Because you just should. No. What? Because she's marrying a man wanker. <laughs> what? That's what he is. He's a man wanker, isn't he? Are you like, marrying Sam? No. He's... <laughs> I thought we were getting an announcement. He's the fiance. I'm Like, the reason I use Josh yeah, yeah, is because yeah. they're engaged. They're engaged. Mm -hmm. So if I was engaged to Sam... And I and he found out I was wanking men off oh, on the no, internet. I just thought we had big I news. I go, "What are you doing here, lad?" And you go, "I know." I go, "I like tweet. I know my business." But he'd be like, "Lad, content is king." You wouldn't I, get I asked. appreciate the loyalty. Yeah, I'd have a long conversation with you where I would encourage you to tell. Yeah, Sarah. but you wouldn't get ass. No. If I said I don't want to tell you, you'd be like, "Well, I'm telling her." Hey, other suggestion: just tell Freddie Quinn. Watch the news. It's amazing, that. It's like tell tweeting. Ma tell Trevor McDonald. It is like tweeting. Tell him Freddie Quinn a secret. It's Freddy. like hiding a billboard at Times Square. Freddie, don't <laughs> tell anyone. And a separate issue. Can I have your Wi Fi code? <laughs> Freddie, uh, do you hear Adam's gay for pay on uh, OnlyFans? <laughs> YouTube.com slash Pickerton. <laughs> No, it is. It's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty. I know I've always been like, you know, it's pretty problematic in it. But I'd still, I would stay way away from, well away from telling everyone. Just quietly judge. What's wrong with that? But don't fucking start grassing. Would you really get start phoning people? No, I would. I would implore my friend to tell his missus. Yeah, you've got to tell her because she's going to find out. We know. It's about to be put on online to 50, 60,000 people via us. It's his cousin as well. What's his name? It's not, it's, it's his cousin. It's not like... Lewis. He said in the email his name's Lewis. It's not, it's his cousin. It's not like with mates, you'd be like, oh, I'm just jibbing him off. I've got to see this con at Christmas. Christmas. Do you see all weddings. your cousins on Christmas? No, I mean... I do. Yeah, a lot of people do though, don't they? I don't see them all. Family events. Yeah. I, I think you've got to try and get him to tell her. That, that's your move. Or try and get a piece of the pie and get involved. Money, <laughs> innit? And if you want more pie, Crave Bakes. <laughs> what? We'll be on sale at the Rowie Half Triathlon, uh, which is taking place on the 4th of November. Um, no, it's in pins, innit? 26th. No, it was tying them all together, wasn't it? Oh, didn't really work. 
26th of September though we are doing like the, the half triathlon I'm, I'm joking we're not going to do that um, but the 26th of September we are doing stand up at Pin Social Club in Liverpool and tickets are on sale now the link is in the description um, and you should click it because I'm on Dan's on Sean Walsh is on and some of the cunt are all book next week no triathlon I might do a half triathlon but I haven't I haven't looked into it enough I don't think I don't think either yeah I think I need to do a bit more research. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a really good day. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. 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 Yeah? No. No? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, guys? Ooh, look at your outfit. Shocking. You look horrible in that. That's a shit t-shirt jumper dress thing, whatever that is you've got on. What you need, lad, is a fucking t-shirt or a hoodie from haveawaredpod.com. You want some official Have A Word merch? Go to haveawaredpod.com and get some then instead of wearing that fucking shite you've got on. It's horrible. You look a joke. Don't be leaving the house like that. You want a hoodie that says rat? That's what you need, lad. Go and get it. Haveawaredpod.com. Of kings. The training for the triathlon's going well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drinking on a Friday afternoon at work. I've had key lime pie. I don't know how to say rheumatoid. And we're having beers. I'm ready to compete. <laughs> Mark Nelson's here as well. Whoop. Press the applause button. Right. Long How's time coming, this. I know, man. Long time dream guest of ours to get on. How are you? I'm, I'm grand. I've just seen it. I don't think I've seen... I've not seen you since pre-pandemic. I saw you. No, you seen like me a, a few weeks ago in the Rob Riley gigs. Oh, fuck, so I did. Yeah. I've seen both of you. You saw yeah, me in the lockdown. Shit. You saw me yeah, in the man. lockdown. Yeah, when we did that. When we did the frog with no people in it. Yeah, that was oh. good. I, I genuinely I think that like, went well because yeah. I made you laugh three times. <laughs> I, I, they, so the frog were like, we're doing a gig, it's Zoom, but you're on stage in the frog, so it'll feel just the same. It won't. It'll feel awful and hollow and mm. miserable, apart from you were in the room mm. and then a couple of other acts who... I can't. I can't. Hayley Ellis was, was Brennan on. Brennan was on. Yeah. Brennan was on. Hayley Ellis. Nah, yeah. I can't remember the other lads. Yeah, and I, I and I lad, just but. they were like, you've got an earpiece so you can hear the Zoom front row, so you can hear them laughing. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to do that. I just want to. I'll do my bits. I just tried to make Liam and the yeah. manager and Mark laugh, and it worked two or three times. Yeah. So in my head, I was like, that's fine. That's a gig. It's I'm the best thing. Like I've I loved having no throughout lockdown. I loved having no audience. It was amazing. Did you have gigs? No, but like just <laughs> no, but like doing when I was doing the, the streams, like it was. Yeah, you did a lot from the stand, didn't you? I did the stand every week, and you couldn't hear them. No, I couldn't. I couldn't see them. Couldn't hear them. It was just me and another guy in a flat. Well, it sounds really was, alien, but I did the theatre Cluid in Mould, but in and around the same time, and that's why I got it in my head. I didn't want the earpiece because they were like, "Could just perform," and you're like, "I know my stuff. This is fine." Mm. You get to perform without the weird delay and like. Mm. Like some couple farting and arguing because they paid <laughs> for front row tickets at a Zoom gig. Like, yeah. fuck off. Just the staff are enough. It's a crowd yeah. in a way. I'm amazed you never saw, no one ever came across anyone doing something in the room. Like they forgot that it was on. You know, like someone doing a line or something like that. <laughs> like, during the gig or just uh, like fucking. It would I wonder be if you could yeah. kick, out, kick someone out the Zoom for drug abuse. Uh, we don't have drugs on our <laughs> Zoom, actually. It's against venue policy to allow people to do drugs in their own living room. Oh, wanking. Wanking would be the oh, one, wouldn't would, it? Oh, <laughs> oh that, yeah. would, that would... I'm, I'm, I've am I'm. been doing stand-up a while, but I might struggle to get my big closer out watching some like guy jacking it in the yeah, front Yeah, I think room. that's fair enough, actually, yeah. yeah. I don't think that's a... I don't think that's a... The frog are like, be a pro. Yeah. Finish. <laughs> Finish him. To him or to you. Yeah. It'd be, good it. if, it'd be good if you said to him, you do know you're wanking, mate. There's cameras are still on. It's like, yeah, that's why I'm wanking. It's because yeah. you're on. That's why this I'm. is my moment. Yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I'm, I'm glad that's all behind us and mate, stay in the question? rear view mirror. On, on the drugs thing, right? Because I'm not big into drugs. I don't do, do much. All right, telly boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, am I right in thinking doing drugs isn't illegal, but being in possession of them is? Yeah. Uh, I think so, I. Yeah. And so if, if a to supply is the one that gets you, you with like twenty pills, could you just eat them all? That's what happens. Yeah, that's what a lot of uh, people in like on the streets and like dealers do. They'll just like swallow right. it. And they, like, you can't get it out your belly. Can't prove where it is. Yeah, yeah. I way. mean, but twenty pills if they're strong, yeah, you're probably in trouble. Yeah, yeah, you'll die. I mean, it's a hell of a night after it. Like, oh my <laughs> goodness me! <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, but if the police can't hold you, you just run away and be sick. 
That the would police be, could be dickheads and you just go, wait there. That would be a pretty intense ride in the police car to the police station <laughs> where you yeah. start feeling some pretty yeah. strong emotions. Yeah. And I'd suggest while they were booking you in, you might be struggled to stand in yeah. and then you die in the cell because 20 pills is going to- you be, why you wouldn't be taken to the cell because you're not in possession of any drugs? What are they, what are they arresting you for? I mean, I don't know the law. But I'm pretty sure they're like, we've got your 20 pills and you go, I'm nom, nom, nom. Like, ah, he's gone, we've got to leave him. Have a great night, sir. Goodbye, officer. Bom, 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 bom. Fucking Adam Rowe dancing down the high street. You could shove them up your ass as well. What? You could shove the 20 pills up your ass. Right, but what, do you think they've disappeared into the land what, of, that like, doesn't exist? It's the like same a as... dispenser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pull your arm. It's the same as swallowing them, isn't it? Oh, he's just up his ass to go. No, not, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine? I think legally, your ass is actually like a pocket. Because they're like, <laughs> you can that's still wallet, in your pocket. It? They're like, that's still, you're still in possession of them. They're still on your purse. Yeah, it's well no. known. The your arsehole is just, is just. The arsehole is nature's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's mother nature's smelly pocket. Where's your keys? Have you checked all your pockets? <laughs> I mean, all your pockets. Oh shit, the car keys. <laughs> my car keys are up my ass again. Could you imagine like, uh, excuse me, are those 20 pills? You're like, fuck you officer. <laughs> One, two, three. No, I think if it's inside the arsehole, I think that's like in your body. But within the cheeks, that's like, just like a big wallet. What, if it's inside the arsehole, it's not like got diplomatic immunity. <laughs> Like the Venezuelan it's embassy. Like in, you're off ground tick, aren't you? <laughs> Diplomatic you're still on the community. Wall, <laughs> what happens if when the 20 pills come, and Edward Snowden? Go on. What happens when the police come? You just throw the pills away. No. Right, they go and get them. How yeah, far can you. Th how far can you. They yours. What? Just say they weren't yours. That's they not what I threw. I threw a big stick. <laughs> you, it's there where they ensue. What do you mean? So <laughs> you have a gun. You see the police coming. And you just throw like the pills in a bush. Yeah. And then they find the things like, oh, I threw a can of Fanta. If they watch you throw the pills. Yeah. So oh, they te they fair, testify that, that they saw you throw the pills. So then it's you, their way against yours then? You're a policeman. So their word counts for quite a lot. Nice. I don't know whether it does, you know. It definitely that's, does. That's what I do when I'm drink driving. I see the ble so I see the blue light, I just fucking bail out the <laughs> <laughs> Just let the car go out. I'm not driving. I don't know what the fuck you were talking about. It's <laughs> driving out of a license, my... mate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you want to spend less time than me and more time catching that fucking runaway car over there? Like. Uh, the mistake you made there, I shove my car up my arse. <laughs> I mean, is that your car? <laughs> it's in my pocket. <laughs> I wish I hadn't brought the limo today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got quite a hall and a Vauxhall Astro in my house. What? I don't know the laws. Well, no, so if I, if I go to court and it's my word against the policeman's, I lose. Very I, much. Yeah. That's why there needs to be two. There not need to be two cops always so that one can corroborate oh, I mean, yeah, what yeah. the other one says because then it's just a... Yeah, where the against you. Yeah. Almost like if you're a bit of a douchebag police officer, you could use that and abuse that power. Yeah, so but what if there's, I'm two, sure that's of, never what if there's two of us? So like, <laughs> what if I get a mate? <laughs> like knock out doubles. What if there's th three more of you and you have five aside? <laughs> that's how you work it out. Yeah, if there's five of us drug trafficking and then we have to go to like cause and five of us go. It's five we on went. one. Yeah, it's five yeah, on we one. We went and then there's two police officers going, but they did. It's five of us, two of you. Yeah. We win. <laughs> Let's take this yeah. to the basketball court. If only the narcotics <laughs> department could afford one more police officer or two more. Yeah, but yeah. like, you just go around with loads, when you'd always win. Yeah, that's it. 50 of us. I, think, I don't think they've actually looked into this. You know, like lawyers, I think they've been overthinking it for a long time. Just get as many people as possible to lie. Just like get all your family and friends, just bring everyone and just say, no, who's an ass? Yeah, all dressed the same. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really hard to prosecute the rows. Because if, <laughs> if there's 50 people and two busies, they can't search you all at once. Just keep passing it along. You ever been in any sort of trouble two with the police? 50 of you Five all right. stood there still. If two police officers find 50 people and go, everyone, stay still, <laughs> and 50 people stay still, <laughs> then they all deserve to go to prison. <laughs> Mate! So if there's two police officers and 50 people, they can't search everyone. They can catch two of them. <laughs> so idea, don't give the fatties the drugs, the slow Your ones. idea where they pass it along the line. <laughs> like a kid's party. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and, then the, and then this is the clever bit. You know, like penguins in the Antarctic, when they go forward in like the hustle like to keep themselves warm, when they get to the front, they just go around the back. That's what you do with the drugs. 
So as the drugs are going down the line, then the the first guy just peels round. No, but legally they can only search you once. And right. if you don't find anything, it's like, ah, you had your chance. <laughs> right. I've seen that law. Yeah. I don't think you should take legal advice from Adam and his dirty pocket. <laughs> have you ever been in any trouble with the police? You ever I, don't th- I don't think so, you know. Have you? You give off a vibe that you have. Yeah, I don't, I can't. I was going to say I can't remember, but I don't, I don't think I have, no. I maybe like petty stuff yeah. when I was younger. Like, What's petty to someone from Scotland? That's paedophilia. <laughs> <laughs> Just a sawn off shotgun, not yeah. a full shotgun. Just petty stuff, you know, <laughs> post office. <laughs> But I don't, I don't think I have, no. Have uh, you? I don't think I've asked you that. Yeah, we, yeah, we have back in, way back in the day. Yeah. I remember police officers ended up like questioning you, didn't they? Because you, and they yeah, ended up your dads. And he didn't believe me. And he basically sort of said to me, I'm going to look into this more. I believe you're lying. And if I can't prove that you're not lying, then you're going to get done for wasting police time and get a, a lifelong criminal record. Or you can just pay this 70 quid fine now. Wasn't and it the kick in a wall? Yeah. And my dad, my dad. So I'd been mugged and someone took my phone and money. In Pop World. And he, he be, yeah, because he, he looked at video stuff and was like, heart oh, bollocks. And they come to me, I lived at my dad's at the time, and he come and like said that to me. And my dad in the room went, he's a Ben Copper, mate. Just fucking pay the fine because he's going to do fuck all to help you. Like so, something along those lines in front of him. And I just fucking paid it. And then there was 48 other members of Adam's family <laughs> going, yeah, fuck off, Copper. <laughs> So what, why was the guy hassling? Why would, did he not believe you'd... Why, why would he think you'd make up getting mugged? So, <laughs> I, I'd gone in the toilet of a nightclub. I was left on my own in town, which doesn't... It wasn't uncommon back then, because I would just never go home, and I'd be the most drunk. So I've been out with him before, and he's gone, I'm going home. Are you coming with me? And I've gone, fuck off, no. That's, that's the 50th time I've asked. Right. That's not the first time. Aye, yeah. yeah. And then I went into the toilets, and someone took my phone off me. And then... and whatever else. And then I wa- started walking home and I got to a point where there was a load of scaffolding, you know, when they have like those wooden things around the scaffolding outside like shops. And you know, you're just angry at what's happened. So I just started booting fuck out the wooden thing and then carried on. And as I got a bit further on, a police car pulled over and was like, are you all right, mate? And I was like, I've had me fucking stuff took off me and I've got no money to get home. So I'm walking home. And he took me home in the car. Then when they investigated it, they found CCTV footage of me booting fuck out of that thing, <laughs> right? And he was like, I think what's happened here is you've realised you've lost your phone and you've start, you're have you taking your anger out on this building. So, like, th- that's what he, he thought. And I was like, Jesus why would Christ. I be walking? Yeah. Jesus why Christ. would I have been walking that far out of town? I'm yeah. 20 minutes out of town at this point. This is why people hate the police, because they prefer yeah. buildings to black people. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Black buildings matter. <laughs> Remember the time you took a piss in the middle of a dance floor? Oh. Yeah, we've had this story. Yeah. <laughs> did, Milo, did Milo tell a story? Yeah, yeah. Milo did tell yeah, a story, yeah. 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 You, you talk, know what, mate? I he didn't talks know where about the that to- quite a lot, actually. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I didn't know where the toilet was, and I decided, you know what? I, this dance floor looks like a, as good a place. Uh, oh, yeah. you fucking animal. I love it. It's I not my proudest moments, but you know what? Once you've done something like that, you've sort of just got to own it, haven't you? Yeah, I did. I felt and a what? sense of pride when I saw you doing it. <laughs> Because like the, some of the rest of them were like, what the fuck's he up to? And I was like, just let him do it. Just leave him be. It's majestic. You've all got to go through this. Yeah. And then I was like, it's like seeing a like deer. A dad, I was like, it's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain sights in nature that you just have to just quietly, oh, look, Rose pissing. <laughs> shh, shh. Don't scare him off. <laughs> shh, shh. But did he dad and that? That's on in the background. It's in a nightclub. Shh. Yeah, yeah. shh. You will just him. Yeah, yeah. Shh. <laughs> Put on, put on the start of Bjork. So <laughs> it's so, so quiet. Psst. Psst. It's so, so still. It wasn't. It was fizzy. Hey! 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 hey. hey. Cheers. Hey. Cheers piss. to you. Oh. Oh, it's so good to have you on. You're at Hot Water this weekend. Yeah. With him. Sm-ha-shin. It's been good. Well, I did last night. Tell you the thing I did last night after it. I did a... Uh, Charity gig. So I got phoned, Justin Moorhouse phoned me uh, yesterday and said someone had pulled out of this golf club gig. A few Liverpool players? It was up, it was up in the Wirral. Yeah. And uh, fuck me, man. The money is just unbelievable. And uh, it's like that kind of thing, like, 
I was like, kind of going, oh, will I do it? Will I do it? And then he told me the fee, and I was like, yeah, I'll, 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 suck. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll suck them off. Yeah. If you want me to. <laughs> We've all like, got yeah. a price, haven't oh, we? Oh, God. And How much do you dance for? <laughs> I don't dance. <laughs> what about for that? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, do you I've want a cost to dance you do? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to buy. <laughs> from, yeah. With the music from the Star Wars bar. Hey. But yeah, it was great, man. And um, yeah, like, and, and they had a. So I went on after the auction. I arrived while the auction was going on. And it was a lot of football. Did anyone put a bid in for you? <laughs> 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 10 pence to the <laughs> straggly cunt at the end of the bar. Um, but they were, they, were, they were auctioning off tops. They were auctioning off, like, the usual kind of, like, a Tyson Fury signed boxing glove. And then they auctioned off a. Ryan Giggs shirt, right? And, and I was like, no one's going to fucking buy this. Uh, and it went for like 200 quid. And I was like, the shame of someone buying... A Ryan Giggs yeah, shirt. which is technically going to be like police evidence at one point. <laughs> like, it's going to be... It's going to have something on it. Like, so... 200 quid in Liverpool for a fucking Ryan Giggs shirt. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah, he's... Uh I, Allegedly. I feel shirt, like no. if you're trying to do a fundraiser, maybe do a little bit of a swapsies with some guy in Cheshire yeah. or Alderley Edge at a, a golf club. Because I feel like you've, you're trying to sell the wrong shirt at the wrong gig. Because in, in, no, in the Wirral... There's Wirral, many fans on the Wirral. There's a lot more Liverpool than Everton fans, though, Of there? course there are, but that's why it was 200 quid and not two grand. Yeah. Uh, and on top of oh, that, no, that, but the that's what I'm saying. violence it's, accusations. <laughs> but there was a... There was a Allegedly. I mean, you say allegedly. I'm just I'm, saying I'm so we willing don't, so we to, keep our jobs. I'm willing to, well, I've, I've barely got a job, so I'm willing to say <laughs> he's a it. fucking violent person. No, because I don't want to dance <laughs> oh anymore. <my> God. <laughs> God, don't fuck it up for me. Don't fuck it up for me. I don't want to... Do, do, right. do, 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 do. Why are you uh, back on the circuit so much, Dan? <laughs> Ryan Giggs. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Ronaldo shot as well, so it was just a big... Yeah. Sex offender night. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> the last oh, welcome to the sex offender part of the auction. <laughs> the last auction. The last auction was Sigurdsson's white van. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. That's why Nelson smashes gigs. Do you know what I always think? Do you know when like you're at one of those sportsmen's dinner sort of things like that? I never trust them that the, the stuff's real. Nah. Because apparently You're a, such a suspicious cunt. Yeah. You've got certificates though. Yeah, I but how how do you know that's real? How do you know anything's real then? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm not paying thousands or hundreds for a Tyson Fury signed glove when I could just get a glove and fucking write Tyson Fury on it myself. You could, yeah. You could do that and when now. they go, oh, well, there's experts in fucking signature writing who can, like, tell whether... It's on a boxing glove. It's not on, like, a flat bit of paper. Yeah. It's on, like, across ridges and stuff. I reckon they just do it. They do it with a photo, though, don't they? But in theory, you could buy 50 gloves, get him signed once, take one photograph, and then you've got 50 photographs, and then you could be like... <laughs> yeah. You know? Have yeah. you never had to... Have you, the two of you never had to sign a shitload of stuff? Like with the merch and stuff. Yeah, the sign posters. The patron yeah. posts. So if you sign up as a £10 patron, thanks, Mark. If you sign up <laughs> as a patron, uh, uh, patron.com slash have a word pod, we give out uh, two posters. Now, the reason sometimes they're a bit slow is because Stee, new Stee, is uh, taking over the sending out of those. Also, God Almighty signing 500 posters one after the other is, you know, when you sign it, you're like, <laughs> I mean, we're not famous, yeah. but okay, we'll do it yeah. a few times. Literally just sat like, fucking hell. Yeah. It's so monotonous. It must just become a squiggle at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, the, the, the last few, you're sort of like, because your, your arm's just gone. But yeah. I mean, back in the day, if you were famous, that was a touch, wasn't it? Because people wanted to pester you, but all they could get is your signature. And if you'd not got a pen, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, you've missed your opportunity. Yeah. Every cunt's got a phone and every phone's got a camera. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just... Uh, I remember hearing yeah, a yeah. Kevin Hart story where he was in the bathroom of a restaurant. Uh, and as he went into the bathroom, some fella was like washing his hands to leave. And Kev was like, I, I needed a shit. <laughs> and he was like, the fella was like, oh, can we get a picture? He's like, yeah, but can you just wait a minute? because uh, I'm going to go in there. And uh, he said, I, sh I shut the door on the cubicle and I heard that he didn't leave. Like, the door didn't open. And I'm like, oh, fuck. He's waiting in the bathroom for the fucking picture. And I was like, is he going to... I get all anxious while I'm having a shit that he's going to come over the cubicle and get a picture of Kevin Hart having a shit, which, by the way, is absolutely what I would have done because <laughs> yeah. who doesn't want that photo? Yeah. 
And then he was like, I've got it. He, he wanted to take the toilet in the bathroom. I was like, man, we're not just go out into the restaurant and take the fucking picture. He's like, it's so weird. Like, have a conversation with me. And then, yeah, we can take a picture at the end, but waiting for me to wipe me bum hole behind a paper thin wall. People are. Put your camera out. It's fucking strange. People are fucking mental. We used to, we did a, years ago, there was a five a side game that we used to play in Glasgow. And uh, Bridges used to play it. And there was one time we were in the shower afterwards and a guy had noticed that he was playing and just came up to him, both bollock naked, and just put his arm around and went, I got a quick picture, Kev, like that. It was just like that. The fuck? No. Man? Like, just people think. Who at that level, was in the dressing think, room? Oh. Was it not like a... Was it someone who played in the game? No, some, they were playing in another game. So they'd noticed that he was playing in a pitch across from us. And then they came off at the same time and everyone in the showers. And he just went up. Didn't think to wait till after... He was maybe dressed. Oh, my God. Just went up, both bollock naked. Photo. Don't try and get a selfie. Don't touch a man when you're naked and they've got your dick out. But it might, unless, you're level, it. unless you're on OnlyFans. And then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that level, people must think they own you. Like, it's... How yeah. big is Bridges? Like, because we obviously get a sense that he's like, he's fucking massive. It's but in, nights but, in, 12, but in Scotland, it's a different level. Mate, this yeah. is how big... This is for me as an English actor who comes up to Glasgow. There was a run where the Glasgow stand was harder than it's ever been mm. because you, the Glasgow voted to, be, to leave the union and then didn't. So that was annoying. And then the EU re- referendum where... I think Scotland perceived it as England dragged Scotland out of the EU. And then Bridges was doing like a run where he just turned up at the stand. Yeah. And his fans are sound, but they are Glas fucking Weijin. Yeah. And the sentiment was, oh, so we don't get independence and now these cunts are dragging it. And you'd be like, you all right? And I swear that was the hardest two or three weekend run. Yeah. I've always loved playing the Glasgow stand yeah. and it got tougher. But his fans were just turning up to the Glasgow stand because he'd been turning up occasionally They'd got wind of it, so just started to... Am I making this up? Did that no, st- no, yeah, they did, because he, he, the hardest thing is uh, he does um, kind of work, work in progress gigs on a Sunday. So, yeah, like Kevin Bridges and Friends. Yeah. And then uh, I did it once, and it was in the day of an old firm game, and it was when Celtic were fucking dominant. <laughs> the, the old firm game started at 12, and uh, the gig started at 5. So at 12, because they put it at 12 to stop people drinking. Whereas Glaswegians <laughs> then just go, just got up at 4 a.m. and start fucking drinking. <laughs> so it's incredible. You just see these fucking zombies walking to the ground at midday. Uh, and uh, so a lot of these fans just went, and I was doing it that day, and a lot of these fans just went, oh, we'll go to the game, get hammered, and then go, go, and, see see, go and see Kev. So uh, he goes on, he goes on at the start, and then Frankie Boyle came on, and then he did 20 minutes, and then Bridges did 40, and then I had to do 20 at the end. <laughs> oh, kind of my going. God. But it was actually lovely, because there's almost like that kind of trust where they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, if he's pals with Kev, he must be all right. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Can I have that? I've said this to you before, a top secret in London. Sometimes if you close that, because you're doubling or whatever with the store or headliners or whatever, they've had Paul Chowdhury open, mm. Sean Walsh pop in and do 10, and Jack White all do the middle. Mm. And then you go on at the end, and they're like, oh, we've got a great headliner. And when you walk on, they go, I don't know who the fuck this is, buddy, but he must be fucking good if he's headlining this. Exactly, And yeah. you sort of get a bit of sort of, oh, who are you? And yeah. Bridges, although he did 40, he's been on, they've seen Bridges, and they, they he's buzzing. then go, and I'm sure he said, this next guy is one of my mates, and he's yeah. fucking brilliant, and I asked him down here because I love watching him. Yeah. So you walk on, and they're like, fucking this guy. No, exactly, That's, yeah. That, when, you, when you're on with a, a really famous guy, when they set you up like that, it oh, is a bit easier, isn't it? That's amazing, like last night, yeah. I was doing the John Bishop support, and he's changed it within a week. So last week, he was going on and comparing it like a comedy club, and he's gone, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just a bit harder that way. And we've said it on the podcast loads. There's two ways of doing support. You take the hit, you lose the magic trick of like, ta-da, it's me, and then help set up the support act. Mm-hmm. Or you just go off stage, uh, ladies and gents, welcome on the support act. And then I wandered out. And last night was so noticeably tougher than Middlesbrough the week before. Oh, really? They were sound in the end, but they heard John Bishop's voice, and the next minute, they're looking at me. Yeah. And it makes them go, oh, and you've got to start from there. Whereas what Bridges did with, and I've done a Kevin Bridges and Friends, he makes it super oh, sound. Oh, it's amazing, yeah. They've got their their yeah. fill, and then he's very complimentary and big and the, hard, the hardest one of them I've had, and I, I will have told this story before, but you can't help but repeat in the end, 
was when you come to watch Bill Baird in Glasgow and we had a pint afterwards yeah. and I opened for him there and his club soda Kenny was the voiceover guy. And this was the introduction. He goes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Armadillo here in Glasgow. We're tonight. We present live in concert, Bill Burr. And they went metal. But first. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they might as well say, some cunt you don't know. Because yeah. they it were great. Anywhere. It was, it was, yeah. they were great. But like when that happened, I was like, oh, yeah. It, Cause it sounded like it was the introduction. Ladies up, we present yeah. live in concert. Bill Barr! Yeah, he is! Do you, do you get it? asked to support me? I, I imagine you're not people... Like I said to John Bishop, like, I don't... I haven't done loads of support. You've not done loads. No. Like, I can't imagine loads of people are picking you. I don't I do not do it much. No, okay, like, if, by the way... <laughs> <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Sure. That, what happened there was, we just... Everyone in the room was like, because you know what I mean. Like, there's a lot of people watching... Because Nelson slays, that's why. Like, it's yeah. not... And a lot I, of people don't want a great support act, do they? Mate, I'm it. doing a tour show in Glasgow next year. I'm not asking you to support. Oh, no offence. Yeah. I know, but it, it's it's weird. It, different acts, it, it becomes... I've not... I mean, I've not done it. I've done doing Bishop in a couple of weeks, actually. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Manford's always pretty good for it as well. Uh, but I did... I did uh, Jim Jeffries two or years ago and that was a completely different kettle of fish because you go on there and people are actually fucking angry that you're on right? and Jim's not on so it's like walking into prison for the first day like you need to stamp your authority immediately oh, right. and because it's, it's fucking heckling and booing and shit the minute you walk on is uh, that just because his fans are a bit aggro yeah and they were just so excited to see Jim and then they go we've got to wait another 20 minutes well this prick does whatever he does <laughs> did you do a full run of them or were you I did I did four of them I did all the Glasgow dates and then I did Newcastle and Newcastle was the worst but the good thing is once you do get them within the first minute then they settle down it's and they the, go oh. Gla Glasgow, Newcastle, Liverpool it's all the same you get two minutes get yeah. them and you'll have the gig of your life oh yeah and oh, don't God. Yeah. and you are packing up air. yeah yeah, yeah, and those tour supports when you win, is a really oh. nice feeling because you're like, I started from minus ten, and this has ended yeah. with a win. Like it's not. There's a lot of gigs where you walk on and people are like, I don't know them, giving them a try. Uh -huh. That's it. That's starting at a zero, and then there's some where they're like, Yeah, hey, this guy. Yeah. But uh, support, I, well, especially there, that's like starting from so far behind yeah, and yeah, still yeah, winning. Yeah, it's yeah, such yeah, a good yeah, feeling, yeah. isn't it? No, it's, it's lovely. Yeah, and it's cool. It's, it's, I mean, it's cool to do it with people you you love as well. I did. Yeah. Doug, I did Doug Stanhope once. Supported oh, fuck. him, and that was genuinely like fucking. Was that in amazing. Edinburgh? It was in Glasgow. Do you just uh, pick up all these juicy Glasgow gigs? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit by the phone. <laughs> the thing is, Glasgow is sort of the Scottish place that the Americans do, isn't it? Yeah. Very rarely, when they do a, a tour of the UK, they don't do Edinburgh. They do Glasgow. No, they don't actually. Yeah, it's always Glasgow, Manchester, London, and then maybe Newcastle as well. Yeah. And maybe Birmingham as well. But if they do three dates, it's London, Manchester, Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even Glasgow's fucking massive. Even though, bands it? are like that as well. Yeah. Any act, it's normally those big three. Yeah. Yeah. Strange. I'd love gigging in Glasgow now. <laughs> <laughs> Last few years has been a lot easier. It was just that run. I was like, what have I done? <laughs> I've always, I, I've always loved Glasgow, and I just think there's sort of a weird connection with Scousers and Glasgow. There is. I was talking yeah. to a guy about this last night as well. I think it's like a, it's, it'll be it'll be do, to do with the docks and all yeah. that kind of shit and fucking and anti-Tory, anti-Tory th running through the whole yeah, city. Yeah, big Irish community. Yeah. It's like guy. Yeah. Have you sorted the drinking rules out though? What drinking rules? The fuck, where are you I'm trying to get shit faced in Glasgow, and everyone gets to three o'clock and you're like, should I go to casino? And you're like, no. I want to go to a fucking casino. Is that the old rules? No, I just felt you not. couldn't go drinking anywhere after 3 a.m. But that's not... Can you go drinking anywhere here with it after 3 a.m.? Oh, I Can you? <laughs> Seven o'clock's the last... Tomorrow night, I'm going to have a pint after the show with... Jesus. ...with Paul Blair and Paul Smith. You can come out with us if you want. Aye. Yeah, and if you, get, if you get home at 3 a.m., then... The you have a nice early night. The thing night. with seven AM is then the pubs open again at ten o'clock, so you've got three hours. There's probably like three hours in a day where you can't drink in Liverpool. Yeah, you just see, you just see three hours a park bench and you're back at it. Because that's what I hate. That's what I hate about gigging in London. Because Awful. You can't Horrendous. find anywhere and you can't get food to go for a drink. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So I just assumed the rest of England was like that. Oh, drinking in Manchester, at, at Liverpool, Leeds. So much more fun than drinking in London. Yeah. Where after a gig you go, where should we go? And like, ah, there's members. 
it's a members club and we only, were only allowed one guest and you're like so where's the fun bars like nah, nah. Yeah. you I can get lucky with a hotel bar in London aye that's it I gotta go back to your a... hotel and just say to the what time's the bar shut three at three o'clock can I give you 50 quid to have 50 quid worth of booze that you'll still give me after you shut yeah Oh, that's a ball. I remember after a weekend at the store in London, and it, me and Ben Norris were desperately wanting to go for a drink afterwards. And we went out with the, the t- uh, two of the door guys, and the only place we could find was a strip club. And I remember sitting there thinking, getting pissed, going, if we were all 21, this would be fucking amazing. <laughs> but as it is, <laughs> we're all guys in our mid-30s. Norris is sitting there texting his wife about the kids in the morning. <laughs> and you're going, there's a Hungarian woman hassling me. And you're going, oh, wait, wait, listen. Where are you, babe? This Just is, a little eatery. Yeah, this isn't the yeah, this isn't the Sinatra Dean Martin experience I expected it to be. <laughs> <This> is... <laughs> texting your missus. How are they are they having a rough night's sleep? All yeah, oh, right, yeah. get your tits away. Can you <laughs> <laughs> The boy's being a cunt again. Can oh. you just give me a... <laughs> oh, your nipples just sent a WhatsApp message. <laughs> I mean, they're impressively large, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where was she from? That was my Bulgarian. That was Bulgarian? Yes. Yeah. I love Bulgaria. I'm from Sofia. Is it? That's a You've place. had a dance, haven't you? We spoke about that. You've had, what? You've had strip dancers, haven't you? Strip. No. I've been to strippers. You've never had a dance? I've n- I, I, once in Prague, we were... It was like a, it wasn't a private dance. Oh, like the, the big ones. I was 23 yeah. and the girl was, they were just all greasy men and she made eye contact with me. All the I, strippers. <laughs> what? The way you said that was all the strippers were greasy. Right. Sure this wasn't a kebab show. <laughs> I'm into some weird things. I was like, where are the strippers? Like, oh, the girls. Sure you had some no, drugs no, no, no. just, <laughs> the dollar meat was just, you're like, oh, I just want good dancing. I just want fat fella. check men like, oh, you <laughs> like this? Um, no, there was a very attractive young lady. She was really cute and they were really gross. Like, you know, in films or music videos where there's like a, like there's a gross old man. Yeah, yeah. And the, 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 I am now, basically I'm that guy now. But 17 years ago, I was the young, and she made eye contact with me for someone to dance with that wasn't like, <laughs> and I blushed and giggled and I made her giggle. So we just had a moment where we went, because she was trying to be like, I'm sexy. And I was like, I'm awkward. And then I giggled and she giggled and I audibly heard an old guy go, oh, for fuck, I'm here. Because that's not the point, is it? Two young people making each other giggles, not, not what does it for him. But so I can't do it. I find it. I, l- l- naked women are great and I'm pro whatever you want to do sex worker dancer stripper I couldn't give a shit I just can't detach from the reality of being like I'd just say something awkward or try and make a joke I'm just I cr- I'd cringe yeah. it's not that to me is not sexy you, you, what I can't do is handle the fakeness of it so we were talking in the break before about like you know when someone's fake nice to you yeah. like it happens every now and then in comedy you meet so- you, you see someone you haven't seen for like a year and you're not really mates, but they like to pretend that you are. I'm like, hey, man, I haven't seen mm. you in ages. How's it going? And Like, I can't really handle that because I'm like, you're just being a knob. Yeah. We both know you don't like me that much, right? And it's the same thing with strippers. When this woman with, like, this, like, unbelievable body comes over to you and she's making out, like, she'd love nothing more in the world than to fuck me just because she wants 11 quid for me to go in that room for one song. It's cheap dance, uh, I, 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 yes. Again, you Tuesday morning well. fucking 11 strippers. 11 quid? You're giving a pound Every coin? Every time Adam talks about strippers, they sound so budget. Oh, God, yeah. Come on, love. I've paid for parking and I've got childcare to take. Give us 11 quid. Two fivers and five twenty p's. That's fucking going, mate. Fucking sexy bastard, you. You said, Dan, you said that thing like, you know, in music videos where they've got a greasy, grotesque man. Like, it's every, like, that's a regular trope, you know, in music <laughs> videos. I've never seen that in any music. Like, no, now I'm then, saying it. Like, I'm not the, sure the, I have. But the, I, the, I sort the, of know the imagery. I, I can't. The Spice Girls 2 become one. That's all very good, but uh, can we get the big fat cunt in right there? <laughs> Every girl band video ruined by that. <laughs> <laughs> they represent the patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> Big greasy Iranian dude. Uh, what film? I, what I'm film at the end the, as well? What? What films at the end? I don't think it's. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll just check my encyclopedic. 
Or <laughs> cyclopedic, anyone? <laughs> Said it wrong. No one was listening. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm sure I have an idea of what I'm thinking about. It might just be some terrible porn I've seen. <laughs> this is why I love the amateur porn, because you can tell I like it. It's just, they're just like, the fake porn even doesn't do it for me. When like, oh my God, that's so good. Like, is it though? Got the barber. You look dead behind the eyes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> my rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> Put the dick in my mouth. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry. I like, I like the amateurs who are like, I like get on though. this. Yeah. Oh, oh, God, fucking, yeah. oh fucking, yeah. Much better than I love it when they're like, this is my hobby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> this is what we really do brilliant. on a Saturday night. We go to a travel lodge and make content. <laughs> 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 Who with? Anyone <laughs> that can hear me from the window. <laughs> <That's a puzzle. laughs> love it. I haven't been tested. I don't give a <laughs> shit. I love the game. Love it. That's what I'm into. I don't want to see. I, I don't even like the idea of there being like a sound man. Do you know what I've started like as a little porn thing? <laughs> Hang on. No, no, no. You're gonna have to say that a little bit louder. <laughs> Pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Can we just try sucking the dick again? <laughs> Love. Can you give me a, a mic test on the gobble? <laughs> <laughs> Is that get, get the boom mic out of the shot. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Is that as loud as you're gonna do it? <laughs> we need to get the level. <laughs> right, we're gonna have to have a pick up on the gobble. <laughs> Has there been any COVID themed porn yet? Uh, well, like I've seen, I've seen or... some, I've seen some mask wearing porn. Yeah, have you? Yeah, yeah, some COVID mask wearing porn. I would suggest it's not the most fun. No, <laughs> trying to have a blowjob that's COVID safe. <laughs> um, yeah, I've seen a little bit of it, but it's not. Okay. I like the old pre-COVID. Yeah, <laughs> ten men in a small room <laughs> and a lady. That was official government policy at one point. <laughs> yeah, was to you, you could only you couldn't kiss. You could. You, mm. They were advising you to do doggy style, and like if you weren't from the same house, like it was. Yeah, I remember Matt Hancock talking about that on one of the uh, <laughs> Downing Street briefings. He did. He didn't say doggy style. Yeah. No, he <laughs> said he, he he said the. Missionary position is not advisable because your faces are too close together, so you'd have to try other ones. He was basically saying, Bum and Eden. He said the missionary position is not advisable. Right. Because of how close your faces are. Unless you're suggest... fucking someone so much smaller than you, and then they're a bit further down. Uh, other options I reverse mean... cowgirl. <laughs> it's COVID safe. Yeah. Uh. The balls on fucking Matt Hancock. Like <laughs> coming out and telling people not to have sex when 10 minutes ago he's been fucking railing his aid <laughs> over his desk. Like, I mean, what? I mean, you've got to respect the man. I yeah. bet. And like, he didn't resign yeah, immediately. Yeah. He tried to cling on like uh, two days. He was like, uh, oh. no, I think I can ride this out. Uh, Boris is like, come on, man. I'm fine. Absolutely fine. <laughs> you fucking rat. But yeah, government advice at one point is that bumming is safe. Matt Hancock, missionary, I've Googled. Hands, face, bum. <laughs> Do missionary Hands, the face the wall. <laughs> Take it in your ass. Uh, not on Google for missionary. Oh, no, I believe no, you. Nothing, nothing came up. Nothing hey, came up. Look, it was. It, uh, it's a fact. If in your mind. <laughs> you it's one of Adam's mind facts. <laughs> it's a fact, and you can't show me the printout where I'm wrong. So therefore, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> what films have got the greasy men in? Tell me now. <laughs> what year were they released? Ah, you said it wrong. Wrong year. Dan, have you got the book? What? Let's see what Mark's position is. Oh, yeah. Mark, what's your birthday? 19th of November. So this is uh, position forget. of the day. Uh, so this is what you should try and get the, the old missus into on your birthday. That's what it's for. Um, Carl's mum's birthday <laughs> is the dog on the chair. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice to know. Uh, Mark Nelson's sexual position of the day is the sun salutation. Oh, Ooh. your sun salutation. Nice. The irony of someone from Scotland in a position <laughs> called the Sun Salutation. Lady Missionary. Oh, November 20th is... Oh, you, you said the 17th. 19th. 19th. Oh. Sorry. Do, do you want to cut that out? No. Is that <laughs> an Adam no fact? I got it wrong. You're fucking dead. <laughs> Show me your birth certificate. <laughs> November the 20th is the... Wee! <laughs> what is she doing here? That's for paedophiles. Because I assume this is the woman. Whose leg's that? Is that his leg? It's like it's like woman missionary, isn't it? She's on top somehow. Yeah, but, but like, why is this like? Why has she got a leg coming out of her, her back? 
That's not an arm. That's, that's an arm. No, no, no. That's his leg. Oh, that's oh, his leg. Oh, hang on. Is yeah. she about to punch his head? Oh, in? the scissoring. <laughs> the scissoring, and he's no. inside her. Looks like an arm bar. Oh, oh, I see. Mate, that's how you lose a dick. Yeah. Yeah. This is good for the audio listeners. <laughs> uh, if you listen to an audio, it doesn't look possible. No. It we'll looks s- like we'll see about that. <laughs> Finn, when's your birthday? 23rd of September. 23rd of September. Uh, oh, this is a good one. 23rd, September 23rd. The bummer heading. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, the bummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you say? What's the one in 9 I didn't think of that. The tower. <laughs> Please. Did you just think out loud? Ed <laughs> Sheeran. Imagine if it is. I mean, the people who wrote the book won't have done that. See if it's called the Flaming Afghan. I will fucking <laughs> die. <laughs> The, ah. <laughs> the oh, falling could you, man. Could you talk us through the flaming Afghan? <laughs> could you give us a... You just literally take your dick and then just ram it in the side of a leg. Yeah, yeah. And then do the yeah. next one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try and go for a dead leg with your dick. And an hour and a half later, she falls over. Yeah, and you're like, that dick can't have caused that. <laughs> Someone's weakened your ankles. <laughs> Big stop melt and still beans. And three doors down, someone else falls over and no one knows why. <laughs> An internal planned explosion of cum. I'm not joking. I'm going to show you something here. I think someone's fucking around here. The only... Look at how entwined all these positions are. Yeah. They're absolutely, literally... Everyone's everywhere. Yeah. September the 11th is the happy existentialists... And it's just two people lying down straight. <laughs> oh, no, he's in an ass there. Oh. No, I know, but they're just li- they're just two. They're lying on the f- ground. Yeah, but if this was like a flick book, you'd see that he's like pumping as well. Yeah, you could turn it sideways. It's the symbolism. Mm. It's a tribute to the fallen. Oh yeah, turn it sideways. Yeah, I see what you mean. Two towers. Good. Good. Thanks for clearing it up. <laughs> Thanks for clearing I'm it up. Help him, Mark. He couldn't see it. <laughs> None more of that. <laughs> Should I have a break? Oh, yeah. 11 sex positions covered. Yeah. Uh, tick. <laughs> tick. That's what Mark travelled here to talk about. <laughs> Definitely. What's happening, guys? It's sponsor time, as always. And this week, it's parcelstation.co.uk. If you work for or run a company that likes to send some shite to your customers, you might be able to save a little bit of money on your parcel costs via parcelstation.co.uk. They're a parcel management company and they work with some of the biggest e-commerce places in the world like Amazon and eBay. And they've also got contracts with all the biggest delivery companies like Hermes, if you want your parcels lashed on the fucking roof, that is, DPD, Yodel. They've got contracts with everyone. And if you want to save a little bit of money on your company's parcel costs, go to their website, parcelstation.co.uk forward slash have a word and see what they can do for you. They might be able to save you a little bit of dough. They've even worked with one of our biggest sponsors, one of our longest serving sponsors, beer52.com. They're a great company. They're fans and supporters of the podcast. So if you are looking to get some parcels sent on a business level, go and support them. They support us. That's how adverts work. We appreciate you. Now let's get back to the episode. You've got a podcast, haven't you, Mark? <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. Uh, I do. I, I've, it's only, I've only done about, I think I've done eight episodes so far. Mm. Uh, it's called My Perfect Playlist. Mm. It's all about music. Yeah? And so shit. your guest comes on and with their perfect playlist? Yeah, it's not like, I, it was a thing I did. I did it on Facebook a couple of years ago where I would ask like questions on a Friday about like, God, uh, what do you reckon? I'm making up a playlist. What do you reckon is the best album opening song of all time and all this kind of shit in there and make these playlists? And it got fuck, we're well into it and shit. Huh? So I was like, ah, might as well do a podcast about it. So it's all it's all that. It's not like just like, what's your 10 favourite songs? Yeah. Everyone's got a different category. Right, okay. And it's good, man, because it's like the, the songs are now just a jumping off point to talk to people that I like. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they... Uh, Folk have been like well interested. Folk have properly opened up on it as well, like really deep, meaningful shit on it. So it's it's been great. I've loved it, man. And it's on Spotify, Apple, everywhere. It's on everything, right? Absolutely everything. But not YouTube yet. No, no. But everywhere else, everywhere all podcast else. platforms. So check you, that out. YouTube's difficult because 
I'm riding the line of how much of the songs I'm allowed to play. So I'm like, yes. damn. Yeah, yeah. Music, yeah. So we got copied. I'd struck by the WWE. Last Did week. you? On the live show. Here comes the money! Was my walk-on song. So the WWE went, <laughs> no. Fuck. I mean, we weren't going to make any money off that video anyway, but it's just funny. The YouTube algorithm oh my picked God, it up. It's... Oh, three songs instantly. No, no, no. Shit. Yeah. So fucking Shane McMahon was just like... Yeah. <laughs> off. I had to punch his head in. <laughs> yeah, he emailed. <laughs> Coming so on my song. Let's have Wrestling it. Wrestling music's the best to come on to, man. Like, I, I, one time I'm going to have the balls to come on to uh, Sexy Boys. Sean Michaels. Sean Michaels. I'd fucking love to come on. And the a proper movie. shit, like, Tuesday night spiky mic gig. <laughs> Just come on at that. Oh, oh, Sean. I think I'm cute. You know? <laughs> when no one else has got a walk on song. <laughs> yeah. You just demand it. Yeah. Well, yeah. like, we don't do that yeah. here. You're like, well, yeah. I'm fucking yeah. not going on then, mate. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think it's you've like... really ju- misjudged Spalding in South Lincolnshire. <laughs> 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 they're, not the, they're not this kind of crowd. Choosing your own walk on music feels like a really fun thing when you're younger in comedy. Yeah. And then you realise it's utterly fucking pointless <laughs> at circuit gigs. Just go out. Do the job. You're like, oh, my intro is going to be this. Like, work on your set, dickhead. Yeah, yeah. But what, at the podcast is, live shows, it's fucking great. What, what is your walk on song of choice if if you get it at a big show, though? So let's say you're doing, like, you're doing a big show, big theatre show. Everyone's got a walk on song. It's a big compilation show. What what song, what song do you want? Um, that's genuinely... You know, at the live show when we did "Let Me Clear My Throat," yeah, I love that. I love, I love the joke of I not a hip hop like clearly, mm. fucking this, mm. like P Diddy, "Bad Boy for Life." I asked them at the Glee to play that for my walk on song because I thought everyone would be like, <laughs> "This guy's not a fucking bad boy for life in it," and everyone was like, "Who the fuck do you think you are?" Like, actually made yeah. the gig harder for thirty <laughs> seconds. And the sound tech was like, yeah, but that's why we don't. We just play our music. Yeah. I think that, I think at the live show for the part, when I come out to DJ Cool, yeah, let me clear my throat. Everyone's like, oh yeah, Dan's a knobhead. Hey, like yeah. everyone like, so I, I don't know. Ah, it depends, too, yeah. yeah. When I was young, I thought something like the Foo Fighters would be great. Banana, banana. And then you realize that no one, it doesn't. Ah, no one gives a shit. Yeah. I, I, what I do like doing is the, if you owned a comedy club, what would be your song that you played, like, uh, Just the Tonic in Nottingham and Leicester plays Sympathy for the Devil. Um, famously, that's, if you're a regular there, you know, the lights change, and then please let me, and then you know that that's coming. You know, they play the full song and it's the start of the show. So I like doing that. Cachise, have you seen? Oh, by Audio Slave. Yeah. Fucking great, yeah. That so yeah, I could really. Um, if you had a great sound man, ladies and gents, yeah. welcome to Nightingale's Chuckle and Fuck Hut. Is that like a two for one ticket? Do you, do you chuckle? Well, it's my gay content in it. I've yeah. got to think about that. It's not just about live tickets anymore, Adam. Let no. me tell you about the industry. What I'm trying to do is build my live performances, but also I need a studio for my gay only fans. You do. Just a little bit of wanking. Ladies and gentlemen, it's early evening on a Tuesday night. <laughs> Welcome to Nothing Gales. Chuckle and fuck <laughs> Stay around for the late show. It's not for everyone. A <laughs> little bit of wanking. Slag it off, gay guys. Bend I there. would go with gorillas now. Yeah, I think. Feel That's good. good. <laughs> feel good thing. Yeah, so, perfect. you know, because there's a laugh at the start of it. So yeah. we used to run a show together and it was a gong show. And... The, what we'd do is was it we'd play ah, ha, 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 and then drop the light. Ah, and then ooh, as he goes, feel good, turn the lights off and nice, black the room out. I only just found out it was feel good. I thought it was doom. Yeah, that was that was I doom, think that's doom, doom. Hey, I don't like Hey Ya, and it's really a song for me. John Blue. Yeah. That was Baby Blue's one, wasn't it? Hey Ya, yeah. And the stand is Reed Petite. Reed Petite, yeah. 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 Hot we... waters is place your hands. Yeah. Raw, yeah. Rawhide used to be Rawhide. Clever. Clever. The Frog and Bucket is D-Light. Groove is in the heart. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, no, it's not. That's I part of their 10-minute... Yeah. R- it's part of their 10-minute running. That's the start of it. When you hear boom. One that, of the comedians is pretty good. But I don't know what it is. It's like a dance song. Right. I can't even think where it goes like now. I love it how comedy clubs are like, we'll really have to think about it. Because if I owned a club, I really would think about yeah. that. 
If I owned a club, I might sing it. Every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adam, I've Adam's not even on, but he's got to be here for eight o'clock. Oh, yeah. yeah. Please let me introduce myself. <laughs> I'm a triathlete and I've got a big dick. <laughs> Feel good. Uh, Didn't Hot yeah. Waters used to be um, Buble before you changed the? Yeah. Don't. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, oh, dun, dun, that's dun. good. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your host and cockpit balls. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> that's how we'd sing it. Do you know my wife? My wife admitted this to me like about three years after we got married. She said I, she almost booked a Michael Bublé tribute act at our wedding. And the idea was that she was like, You know how you love Michael Bublé? And I was like, No. I've literally never mentioned his <laughs> fucking name in this house. <laughs> And the idea was he was going to come out and sing a song just to me as I sat on a seat with everyone at the wedding looking round. And I was like, in what small part of your brain did you ever think this would be a g- Me getting a lap dance by some <laughs> fat Glaswegian cunt in a tuxedo pretending to be Michael Bublé. Like, it's the weirdest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I know you well enough to know the secret. You'd be loving that. <laughs> I mean, I'd like. Hello, my name's Mickey Bubbles. <laughs> play me, Gideon. Look at me, Mac. And let me play among us. Eye contact. Jesus. Strang- strangers in the night. <laughs> Get to fuck. I fucking did it. Oh. Maui! Get <laughs> <laughs> some piss head from one of the all, all day karaoke's in. <laughs> Mark, because you love alcohol, we've got this guy who's riddled. Uh, congratulations! <laughs> Team <to> fucking. Mark. <laughs> A long, long time ago, I can stand on my I genuinely love to book. I can't get the thoughts out of my head. Of what your face would have been as your wife stood there like I did it for you <laughs> <laughs> the real one was busy <laughs> you're just like oh. I love that I just sat down in a kilt <laughs> in a fucking bar. I'm taking off. my tie off wrapping it around my head <laughs> Oh. Um, <laughs> shall we do? Uh, shall we do some questions and a couple of I have a words? Uh, this is from Daniel. It says wag wag. <laughs> I've just found out P Diddy dated his son's ex girlfriend, <laughs> and I thought I'm going to email have a word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I'd love to know what newspaper you take in the morning. Uh, I've just found out P Diddy dated his son's ex girlfriend. Do you think when you break up with someone, they are completely off the table for all that know you? If so, where's the line? Nice one. Dan. I think the line is sucking your dad's dick. What? <laughs> what? I think your ex-girlfriend <laughs> sucking your dad's dick is a problem. Oh, I thought oh, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you I was, was going to go, that's kind of a line for life, to be honest. <laughs> like, that's just found out P. Diddy dated his son's ex-girlfriend. Adam's where your line? <laughs> sucking my dad's dick. <laughs> No sucking my dad's dick is the line. The last one's explained. No, oh, I'm line. as easy going as the next man. <laughs> fucking draw the line. Yeah, my dad's once, dick. Yeah. In my mouth. Once someone has fathered me, I just think from then on, I'm not going to suck his dick. That was so irrelevant to what the question was. <laughs> yeah. So if you, oh, if you actually, do you know what? I don't even agree with what I was us. trying to say. What? So if so you and Sam split up. And your dad, That's six hard. months no, down no. the line, like, Adam, I've got something to tell you, lad. No, here's the thing. Sit down, he's still wearing no, the hard, lanyard. It's hard, it's hard for me to... <laughs> I know that you're not going to suck my dick. So Turn that bottle around as well, they don't fucking pay us. It's hard for me to sort of say it about Sam, because I'm still with her and in love with her, so it's hard for me to separate it. But once you've broken up, for, certainly for me with my past exes, once you've broken up, you're not in love with them anymore. And if, if they want to have a go on my dad, and he's up for it, I'm not going to stand in the way, all three of them, at the same time. Right. I think, I think, 
That is theoretically right, but I don't. I, if you turn up for Sunday dinner at your dad's <laughs> and you knew your brother was going to be there and then your dad's there and you're taking Sam and he's decided to surprise you and then my ex -girlfriend your, your, your ex-girlfriend is just sat there like, Adam, it's lovely to see you again. We've got some news. I don't think you're going to be tickled pink. I'll be do, there you know what, do you know what seconds. I'd be pissed off about is that he didn't warn me till I got there. I'd right. be like, do you know what? You've got to give me a day there. You've just got to give me 24 hours to process it. Tell me, tell me, girlfriend, oh, by the way, my dad's banging me ex now. And she's going to be there. She's going to be passing you the roasties. Yeah. No. Also, no. the <laughs> biggest shock of all of this would be that my dad's made a roast yeah. tonight. <laughs> 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 I don't mind that, Dad. Are these Yorkshire puddings? <laughs> All right, Jade. Uh, you know, the oven's working, is it, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that made me sweat it. All the things we've said today, that's made me... Well, I I genuinely think when, when you've had a serious relationship with someone, like with your mates, you'd be like, lads, could you just sniff around one of the other three and a half billion women? It, it it genuinely does depend on how close I am to that mate, and the closer I are, the closer I am, closer I am, the more I said it wrong. The, the 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 more distinct the line is. Do you know what I mean? He can't sleep with any of my ex girlfriends again. Again, <laughs> we spoke about it. Or your dad. You can't. <laughs> you can't suck his dad's dick. That's the line. Isn't it? No, but I've, no, we've said this before. If he turned out to be gay and my dad was looking to you know get involved before you know. Father Sam takes him away and he wants to experience it and you just wants to crack on. I could live with that. That's um, a hell of a bucket list, isn't it? <laughs> See Niagara Falls, suck Carl's knob. That is a bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, I've got mates who, if they, if, if they're a distant mate who I see a couple of times a year, who I'm genuinely friends with, I'm not talking about acquaintances. Nah, you, nah. I could be like, do you know what? It, they're not in me life enough for, me, for it to bother me. Give me some context. Name a mate who, who, who could be. Fitzy. Yeah, guys. In the I weeds know. a little bit here, yeah, though, I you know, because like, we're naming mates that Josh, no one knows. Josh. <laughs> yeah, no. it's different, isn't it? No. You. No. What about PT? <laughs> PT. What about uh, uh, know, Steve Four? What, what about, about Bazo? What I'm about Ginge? Aye. Would I'm you reckon Ginge? Danny. What about Amadeus? <laughs> What about Deshaun? Danny, I could put up with. He's a Danny, mate. Oh, Danny. He's genuinely my mate. That's fair enough. But he's not. Is that camera on? I'm not as close to him as I am to Josh. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I think they just go with someone else. There's, there's so many more. Yeah, there. I get it. But like, love is love and you can't stop it. What about, you know, if you and your <laughs> missus split up and you've got kids and in theory, they're living with her because obviously. Yeah. You know, because they're not coming down to do hot water with you, are you? <laughs> Yeah, we have. I have the kids every weekend. Well, that's a cunt because I'm a good comedian. Like, I'd like to thank Mark Nelson and his two kids at the back. <laughs> I forgot sweeties. Um, I, if if Laura left, if Laura's gone. Why is she gone? Because she's fucking one of my mates. Yeah. As long as there wasn't like an element of betrayal, John yeah. Chessington. At least I'd know that the guy that was living with my kids was a mate and was but sound. She, I wouldn't be ecstatic. He's not your mate anymore, though. Does it make it different? F. She's had an affair with him. Yeah. Or have you split up? It's been a while and then one of your pals gets with her. Yeah. Okay. I don't want there to be any betrayal because then it's got to be revenge. Yeah. Um, and uh, that type of revenge are you talking? Are you going to shag one of your family members? No. I'm going to um, get one of the. I don't know. What do you mean? What are you thinking, like? Awesome. All oh, right. All right. Yeah. So I. Uh, <laughs> or just make one of them suck your dad's dick. Um, no, I don't know. I, I think if there'd been a bit of a break and then she was like, I've got some news and with Barry Dodds, I'd be like, that is uncomfortable to think about. But at least I know Barry's sound. Do you know? Yeah. At least would, you be, would you be as close a friend with him though? If you knew he was... Uh, I suppose it might affect the relationship a little bit. Where you're like, mate, how are you? He's like, yeah, how's the podcast? I'm like, yeah, how's the Parapod uh, film tour going? And how's fucking my ex-wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose it would. Yeah. It might if add you say way. it like that, it would it would send a message that you still got you're still quite disgruntled about the whole situation. I was for my wife. <laughs> well, asked, <laughs> just yeah, ideally someone else though, innit? Yeah, I, I just think anybody, any of your friends, distant or close, just fucking do something else. 
Yeah, I know, but there's there's certain friends I've got that don't owe me as much loyalty as me close ones do, and I think that's where the the grey area is. I don't even think it's loyalty, is it? It's just don't be a dick. It's just a code. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know. Uh, I know, but like, where does that code end? Is it anyone you've ever met? Is it anyone you've ever been for a pint with on their own? Is it anyone you've ever been for a pint with in a group? What about what, family? What, what makes them friend enough? Phone number in the phone. Aye. What about Have family? you got the phone number in the phone? And then you do know them. What <laughs> well, if... Danny McNally texted me before and I, it come up as his number because I've got his number saved so he can shag whoever he wants. <laughs> what happens if um, someone, like a friend, shagging someone in your family? Is that the same, different? No, that's fine. Fine? Yeah. Oh, that... no, I'm fine with that as long yeah, as I know that they're not a rat. Because I've got mates who are proper love rats, and it's just who they are, and it's horrible and whatever, but th- they're still me mates because I've known them longer than they've been like that. But I would never let one of them go near a cousin. Right. Do you know what I mean? Who see, I'm close with. A cousin I couldn't give a fuck about. Yeah, but I'm close with my cousins. Uh, see, There's a few cousins I'd actually encourage to go there because I fucking Sister? Sisters. Yeah, he's close with his cousin like a sister. Right. Oh, yeah, that, that you're talking about Dolly? Right. In my head, I'm saying Dolly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dolly's very happily... Engaged and to be married and all that. Yeah, my mates could should not. Uh, I'm not the like. Oh, fuck, fucking only. It was not my style. But my mates were not to go. I know she was three years younger, but like if we got to 21 and she, my sister was 18, that wasn't. Nah, it's not. Cool. That would cause an issue. Right. Dolly's is like, ni- Dolly's only nine months younger than me. Any just, it's not even about the age. Yeah, not your sister. Come fuck off. All right. Just go on. Like that's not. On, yeah, but that, again. I'd, I'd, I'd probably be more like that when I was 21 and she was 20. But now that you're getting to sort of 30 odd and your mates should be stopping j- fucking around as much and maybe they're looking for something, then I can I can live with that. I don't want one of my mates, like let, let's call her my sister because I treat her like that. I don't want my mates to shag my sister and never see her again. But if they wanted to go out and give a relationship a go, and by the way, her fiance Luke is a really good friend of mine and I hope none of this ever comes to fruition. <laughs> yeah. And I hope no one, you know, shags Adam's dad as well, because that's an awkward one as well, isn't it? Not even women. No, I mean, none, none of you. If, by the way, if you're a £10 patron and, and you're you sort of... You can shag Adam's yeah, dad. I'll, I'll arrange it. If you, if, you d- if you DM us on Patreon, I, I put a picture on Instagram with my dad yesterday. He's a handsome fella. And do you know oh, what? He's a lovely man. If you're sort of, let's say, 40 and over, because he's 60, so that's a big enough drop-off. 40 and over, I'd say probably like... 85 to the upper limit. I don't want them banging 90 year olds. I don't think we've got many 90 year old patrons anyway. <laughs> 10 40. pound patrons. <laughs> got a good pension, haven't you? No, I, don't, I don't spend on heating. It's very expensive. But I am a 10 pound patron for have a word. This is the best value patron I've ever heard. Yeah, like, you can shag me down. 10 pounds. I'll at least offer them. You've got to send some pictures. I don't mean of your fanny. I mean of your face from a, in good lighting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tweet, yeah. yeah, tweet them in. Yeah, no, no, this is a private thing. Email in to have a web. Yeah, this is a private thing. <laughs> know some boundaries, guy. Yeah, no, yeah, no one's seeing this. Have a word pod at gmail and make the subject Adam's dad's dick. We're playing. We're playing <laughs> with pimp, a selfie. You've done pimp that my dad. <laughs> You've already got one somehow. <laughs> uh, talking about love rats. Should we do a have a word? Because you know it's the name of the program, isn't it? People send in these things and we try and help and we don't. No, you, know it goes, no, don't you know what? I've decided today I'm going to actually say what I feel. Regardless of what it is, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to say it how it is. Just be funny. Oh, my days. Uh, hey, lids. My fella's a regular listener of the podcast and I need you to have a word with him because he might actually listen to you or have a word with me if you think I'm overreacting. We've been dating for two years now. And in those two years, he slept with three other women. Let me just get this out. Okay. <laughs> he slept with three other women. The second time was when he got a blowjob off my cousin. There's the other one. <laughs> and the third was another random girl who he fingered on the dance floor at Pop World. <laughs> what the fuck? I've tried confronting him about it. And his reasoning is it's because since the start of our relationship, I have been on several different prescriptions for panic attacks and anxiety. And he says, my anxiety has had a negative impact on him. And that is why oh, yeah. he does this stuff with other women and that it's not even proper sex, so it's not cheating. Am I right to feel put out by him and the other girls? Or, or <laughs> does he have a point and I'm just overreacting? 
That's from a lady. I think she needs called, to chill out. Ah, uh, yeah, love. Just, do you know what I mean? More prescription, probably. I think it's you, isn't it? Yeah. Oh no, that's right. He is the biggest rat bag in the land. Fuck yeah. yeah. He has managed in some way or another to fuck finger wise, finger fuck three different women and convince another woman that it's her fault. She's smoking a pipe of the face. Can you imagine like? Catching your, your boyfriend fingering someone on the dance floor of Pop World and be like, I've had a really hard time since you've been having these panic attacks. <laughs> yeah, you're having another one now, aren't you? I bet you're having another one now. And whose fault's that? Cha! 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 Hey, that's for you. What a dirtbag. Leave this man. Red flags everywhere. Yeah, you, you like, there's, there's not really much we can say about this. It's so unbelievably obvious. Um, Leave him. Now, yeah, and shag as many people who know and love him as you can. Yeah, and Adam's dad. If you sign up at patreon.com slash have a word part 10 pound patron, you should also try and get this guy a good kick in as well. Yeah, yeah, if you're like, a five pound patron, oh no, yeah. I think the three pounders deserve a go yeah. to cheat on someone, then gaslight them and say it's their fault. Well, to be fair, to, like, what a cunt that guy is a listener, so he is genuinely listening to this. Like, mate, if you want to fuck around and you're young. Fuck around, but stop dragging her around with you and then being a douche and trying to blame her. Like, if you like, I was young and I was a right pest, go and be a pest. But then you don't get someone to have a cuddle with on a Sunday morning because you're feeling hungover and be like, babe, could you get me a pack of cheddars? Uh, just like, if you want to be a sex pest and go shagging, then do that. Just don't we should drag define someone sex else. Pest, yeah, no, I just mean, I just mean a shagger, a fucking shagger. <coughs> you can't then be like, yeah, but I like a girlfriend as well. And for, like, mate, who's written Yeah, in? make your own bacon bussies, is what we're saying, lad. Yeah, yeah and then, you know what I mean? And then go and finger loads of people on the dance floor of Pop World, if they've consented. And if Adam's in, neck his wallet as well. <laughs> yeah, and then finger him, because the police won't believe him. <laughs> Why were you kicking the fuck out of a scaffolding? I got fingered. Of <laughs> course you did. <laughs> Sounds like you fingered yourself. <laughs> Men were angry about it. <laughs> Where did you finger? My dirty pocket. Oh, dear. Oh. That's from before. That's where he found the wallet. <laughs> um, but please leave him. <laughs> yeah, Mate, leave him. you seem like a nice girl. You guys, split up, please. Yeah, split up and save both of your mental health. In two years, we're like, health. we stayed together because it said it was my fault for writing an email. And now we've had a kid. Um, Getting nowhere. This is another relationship one. Okay. Ready? How long have you been with your Mrs. Mark, just before we carry on? Married for 10 years this November. Wow. That's 13 years total, I think. Okay. Muscle tough. Yeah. You are Jewish, aren't you? Yeah. Very. <laughs> very, very. Very, <laughs> very Jewish. Traditionally yeah. Jewish. Yeah. Really? Hasidic. Hasidic. <laughs> yeah. Hasidic? Hasidic. Not an alkaline Jew. <laughs> let it hang. Let it hang. Oh, Mark. Mark, you've got to let those hang. You can't laugh at them. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> I thought I, I thought Adam's alkaline joke was the best one. I can't believe it. it really didn't get what it deserved. It fucking did. Fucking jar Colby there, mate. A um, lot of Jews in Dumfries. <laughs> big Jewish Massive community. Jews. Can't move. For, can't, can't move for synagogue. They, the big Jews. They, they call it the, the Palestine of the South. <laughs> Adrian's wall, I'll show you a fucking wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am having a good time. Wagwad lids, uh, got something I need you to answer as it's driving me insane. Been with my girlfriend since the start of lockdown and didn't really see each other much through it. I got emotional at that. <laughs> you were nice? Yeah. I, I've got to be honest with you. Yeah, I've done nothing when I'm looking at you, but I'm not listening. Can I know. start this one again? <laughs> But it's been a long pod. Um, wag wag lids. Uh, got something I need you to answer as it's driving me insane. Been with my girlfriend since the start of lockdown and didn't really see each other much through it. One major thing is she has never slept with anyone before. We are both early 20s. I'm 21. She's 20. Thanks for getting specific. <laughs> uh, and I'm starting to get the feeling there's something wrong. We have done things with each other. They've done bits. They've done bits. And each time we try to take it further, we stop as her, I'm going to read this verbatim, as her pum pum is too tight and begins to hurt her. And I obviously don't want to do that whilst trying to get 
who are in the mood. Really need some tips on what I can do. Already tried asking her what she's into, but as she hasn't really tried anything before, she doesn't know herself. Do I need to have a word or do you need to have a word with me? I need help here, Lids. It's from Sam. Finger blanging. Yeah, he's trying that and it's too tight. Try more fingers. It, less, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's hurting with one. Oh, right. He needs to buy some lube, doesn't he? Yeah, I was going to get lubes to. Yeah. Or a vice. <laughs> no, not a vice. What's the opposite? Jesus Christ. The stirrups. It, is that what it is? Yeah. Stirrups. <laughs> Buy stirrups, that's your, your advice to someone with a tight vagina. Trying to help. <laughs> You're trying to help, are you? Yeah, okay. What's your advice? Uh, blow on it. Blow on it. A shoe yeah. A wand. <laughs> blow on it. A magic spell. <laughs> no, you know when you can't get... Like she just fell over and scratched you know when you in year three. No. I know what you mean, but you can't get a plastic bag. <laughs> Never bring kids into it. I was just about to blow on an imaginary vagina, and then you were mentioning year don't three. Blow on it, it would the knee. No, no, it's you know when you're trying to get a bag open, you're like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Lick the corner, yeah, then yeah. You, you rustle it. Yeah, but do you, you never used like cut your arm and like you get told to blow on it when you were a kid. Like, come on, blow on it. Right. So she should blow on her fanny. No, oh, he's saying she should blow on it. Oh. I'm saying like that. I'm oh, doing a simile right, for right. joke purposes. I was doing another simile that made more sense. The bag one. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. 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 I liked it. I like it as well. Why would you blow you blowing your arm if it when, when I was a kid, if I cut something like It's not a fucking Nintendo game. <laughs> <laughs> that would have worked. Better than the bag. Uh, okay. Yeah. We, go. Let's let's do it. Let's do it again. Let's just let's learn from it as podcasters. You've got yours, we've yeah. got ours. So let's do it again. So uh, her pum pum is too tight and begins to hurt her. And I obviously don't want to do that whilst trying to get in the mood. Really need some tips on what I can do. Do I need to have a word or do you need to have a word with me? I need help here, lids, from Sam. Blow on it. Yeah, like a bag? No, like a Nintendo game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes! Vaginismus! <laughs> What's that flag for? Vaginismus. It's going nowhere, isn't it? You need to pass her on to a micro dicker. You're too big, my friend. Sam, you dick too big. This How is Adam. fingers too big? What? They've done bits. They haven't even tried to have sex. Yeah. We've, They've done no, bits. No. We've done things to each other. Every time we try and take it further, we have to stop as her pum pum is too tight. Oh. You, she needs a less endowed gentleman. Mm. So you're offering to shag this woman. <laughs> it worked, doesn't it? It worked, doesn't it? It worked. Um, yeah, you need, you need, you need lube. You need lube. Millennium lube's good, isn't it? You like a millennium lube? Millennium lube and some relaxing music, whale music. <laughs> I don't think making women think about whales. Ooh, ooh, it's an owl. <laughs> Shit, I can't do a whale. Oh. That is a dying cow. <laughs> now do an African dying cow. Oh. <laughs> oh shit, that was good. Oh. That meant to be a whale. Yeah. I think we're doing it. <laughs> Google va. Google laughing. I think we're back to arthritis. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Like this, this can happen, can't it? Some young girls before they've, <laughs> I'm not going to say that, <laughs> before they've had sex can, you know, have tightness issues and they, you know, they just need to work up. Utterly butterly. I use boot trees for new footy boots. What? Do they exist? It's called a boot tree. Yeah. You put them inside it and it keeps it loose all week. Lovely imagery. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so your advice to me. Yeah. Just, just walk up out there. there. Put a tree up. Put a boot tree up. <laughs> yeah. It worked for my preds. Yeah, so just go down to DW Sports <laughs> with your girlfriend. I think you know why I'm here. Yeah. And ruin a <laughs> shop assistant's day. <laughs> Lad, I got a question. So I'm 16, you know, the first job. I barely type. <laughs> Have you got any boot trees? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a picture of a boot tree in now and you'll, you'll understand it helps I just think relaxing just get relaxed what, what relaxes a young lady it's not lady? worried is it 
I think she might be tense. No, if Fanny isn't worried. No, I think there might be like a, oh, oh, put the heating up, warm everything up. <laughs> well, Get music. In the bath. Heating up, well, music. <laughs> <laughs> Just take it to Sea World. That sounds <laughs> Flow it in with the whales. It's warm in Sea World. Always warm at the aquarium. <laughs> Fuck her at the aquarium. <laughs> Honestly, do you have whales in the aquarium? The blue How big aquarium? is it? It don't fucking whale. <laughs> whales aren't much. That's a big tank, isn't it? Blue Planet Aquarium. Shag it there. There you go. Sorted. The most relaxing thing you can do is have a bath, I think. With a whale? Well, I suppose you get in the water at the aquarium. Sorry, go. I don't think you can put. <laughs> I don't think you can put a woman in water and then play whale music because that's going to make her feel very self-conscious. It is. Yeah, it is. Go because she'd be like a whale. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't she feel self-conscious at the aquarium if she was naked in the water and everyone was looking anyway? <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Don't damn. play the music. <laughs> yeah, go out of term time as well. <laughs> it's an extreme solution. <laughs> Like, there must be something easier than dipping this girl into the aquarium tank <laughs> and fucking her in front of her. I don't know why we even got A group there. of kids visiting the like. Right. This will relax you. Yeah. Ignore them. I'll tell you what, I know, I know women and I've got a day pass to the aquarium, so... This has been a stupid, stupid episode, and I've had a wonderful time. A whale of a time? Yes. Well done. That was good. Telly. You're getting telly. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Get P. Diddy to fuck her. This ain't going nowhere. Going nowhere. Your pum pum's too tight, Bummer. so it's going up your ass. Bummer, Bring yeah. in the whales. Ooh, I can't. Why can't I do a whale? Bum bum. <laughs> One of the <laughs> fastest growing UK podcasts. Have a word. Mm. Mm. Mark, where it? can we find you? Mark? I've laughed too much. Mm? Where can we find you on the internet? I, I don't have a website or anything. Do you so, have a so Twitter account? I have a Twitter account, Mark Nelson Comic. And Instagram? All the shit will be on there. Mark Nelson Comic. Okay. And my perfect playlist on all podcast platforms. All podcast stuff. If and you're an early access Patreon, me and Mark are both for Hot Water Comedy Club. Tonight, Saturday, the... Oh, and I'll be, I'll be releasing a special soon as well. That I filmed. There you go. So, yeah. How will we get that? Just follow you on Twitter, at Mark Nelson yeah, Comic. Yeah, I'll put it all up on there. It'll be on YouTube. YouTube's Mark Nelson Comic as well, I think. Everyone's okay. fucking. Well, when that really comes out, well make done. sure you message us and we'll give it a plug on a future episode. As well, well, do as we always have to get you on a live show as well. Yeah, we, that'd be awesome, will, man. Yeah. Absolutely. If we ever wander north, which we hopefully will, one day. Well, we we know we've got a, a chunk of listeners up in Scotland, so we'll have to do a Scottish live show. I Is there a be. Blue Planet Aquarium in Glasgow? There's one at says Queensferry. Ooh, oh, the Jewish one. The yeah, Jewish yeah, one. I know that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's near the synagogue. <laughs> Jews only. <laughs> Blue Planet Aquarium. Sea <laughs> World. <laughs> <laughs> this has been an absolute corker. <laughs> Remember to get tickets for pins on the 26th of September. And um, it's been a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Eshan Akbar, uh, can I send you the details and you'll put Eshan's ticket link in the thing? He is oh, at yeah. the London Wonderground Udderbelly Festival on Tuesday. Eshan, big fan, friend of the pod. If you are in London or going to be on that date, Go and see him. He needs a few more bums on those seats. So let's give him a lift. See you soon. Cheers, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Lovely. Mega.